Hello friends. Welcome to the fanfic universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. Naruto becomes one of the greatest ninjas of all time Befri to the finals of the Chunin exams. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Naruto just kept running from Ebisu, not even daring to turn around and look. In his mind hundreds of thoughts were racing through his head. One was that Kakashi didn't want to train him but rather train Sasuke, just because he was going up against last year rookie of the year. I can't believe that Kakashi sensei would just abandon me. It's like everyone only cares about the Temei. But the most important thought in his mind was the blood oath he made for Hinata when she lost her match against Neji. He didn't know why he did that, it was if watching Hinata being hurt and degraded made him so mad. He also couldn't help but notice that she would call him, Naruto-kun, a lot, unlike the names he got from the rest of the villagers. Now that he thought about it, it made him feel warm inside whenever she said his name or talked to him. Naruto was no expert at looking at people's emotions but could it be that Hinata actually liked him, perhaps loved him? Naruto had never thought that there was a person in all of Konoha who saw him like that. He soon found himself deep in one of the forest of Konoha all alone. He had been so distracted that he hadn't noticed where he was going. Sighing in defeat Naruto sat down and continued on thinking about everything. However soon he fell asleep and sunk deep into his subconscious. Naruto's mindscape Naruto fluttered his eyes open before he sat up and rubbed them. After that was done he looked around to see he was in some kind of sewer. However it did not have the smell of a sewer really and he saw no signs of life either. I could have sworn I was in a forest. Now where am I now? Naruto muttered to himself as he began walking to find a way out. It seemed like he had been walking forever, turning down various halls and cutting corners, and he was getting annoyed. He stopped however when he felt a wave of power. The blonde turned around and walked down another hall and kept moving straight. When he arrived his eyes widened when he saw a giant cage that was being held together by a single piece of paper. Walking forward he stopped and tried to look within the cage but couldn't see anything past the bars, that is until a pair of large glowing blood red eyes with black slits and a large mouth formed into a grin that showed its large sharp teeth appeared. Naruto stared at the eyes till a voice spoke, and it wasn't Naruto's. Hello there, human. Naruto's eyes widened as the voice was deep and intimidating. He wanted to run away but he was frozen to the spot. A or why you the Kayubi? Naruto asked. The figure laughed and gave a nod. Yes I am, puny human. You must be my container correct? Kayubi asked. Naruto gave a quick nod. Well do you mind pulling off that tag and letting me out? Kayubi asked nicely. Naruto was going to nod till he realized what the fox said and glared. Like hell I'm not, I'm not letting you out, Dadbeo. Naruto declared not noticing Kayubi's eye twitch at the verbal tick. Sighing, Kayubi spoke. Worth a shot. Anyway, what do you want Kit? Kayubi wondered. Naruto blinked in confusion since that wasn't the response he expected. But he wasn't complaining, that response was much better than the one he thought he was going to receive. Well I actually don't know how I got here, where am I anyway? Naruto wondered. The Kayubi gave a shrug. We're here in your mind. Pretty dull if you ask me. Kayubi grumbled. Naruto looked around and couldn't help but agree. Okay so how did I get here? Last thing I remember was falling asleep in a forest. Naruto muttered. Kayubi nodded before speaking. The reason that you are here, well let's just say that someone wants to have a chat with you but right now it's just you and me. The Kayubi said in a bored tone. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the fox. Hey, how come you aren't all angry and boasting at me like I thought you would? Shouldn't you be yelling at me about how you are the great Kayubi and I am nothing but a sack of flesh and bones and should bow down to your power? Naruto asked. Yeah, but that's too much work and unnecessary, and I can't really live up to that title if I have been sealed three times in the past fifty years or so. Seriously, I don't even have the chance to stretch my legs anymore. Not to mention I haven't taken a shower in forever. Kayubi ranted. Naruto couldn't help but sweat drop at the giant fox's behavior. The Kayubi was big for sure but it didn't seem all terrifying and dangerous as the villagers made it sound to be. He was pretty friendly more or less and in fact it almost sounded like a regular human, almost. So um, 
You said someone wanted to see me? Naruto asked curiously. The Kyubi nodded and tilted his head to the right, revealing a door, which said, The paths, on it. That paths. What's that? Naruto asked the fox. The Kyubi smirked. Why don't you open it and find out? All I know is that door appeared when your chakra was messed up by that creepy ninja in the forest of death. Naruto pondered a moment and suddenly remember about that creepy Kunoichi slammed her hand against the seal, making him angry that he didn't mention it to Kakashi. But seeing how he couldn't really figure out how to get out of here, he thought what the heck and walked towards the door. Moving slowly he opened it before the door opened fully on its own and he was soon sucked in. The Kyubi, who was watching looked at the door and could have sworn he saw some kind of eye in there, a familiar one too. Back with Naruto, the said boy was now in a room of complete darkness. Where where am I? He asked himself. We have been waiting. A voice said startling Naruto. Who are you? Naruto asked nervously. We are you? The voice responded. Me? Yes and you have unlocked what has been deep inside of you. Deep inside of me? Naruto asked confused. What does that mean? Who are you? We are you and we shall slowly become one but first you must master us. Master you? There are six paths and one outside of us. Diva, Asura, Human, Animal, Prada, Naraka and finally Outer those are the seven paths, the true you. But for now we shall leave, this is something you must learn on your own in order for you to become the next sage. The voice said before disappearing. Before Naruto could ask anything else his mind was suddenly bombarded with information, knowledge long lost. It was so overwhelming for him to contain. Naruto screamed in agony as he tried to stop it and then he blacked out again. The Kyubi watched as the boy was shot out of the room and skidded on the ground and the door closed and disappeared. He watched as the boy got up and when he looked back at him, the Kyubi's eyes widened. The boy's eyes were no longer the warm blue they once were. Now they were fully purple with metallic silver along with six rings converging on a small dot-like pupil. The Rinnegan, the Kyubi thought. As if hearing the fox Naruto squinted his eyes before murmuring, Kurama, causing the fox's eyes to widen. Your name is Kurama right? He said in a deeper voice that sounded full of wisdom. The Kyubi's eyes narrowed. How do you know my name boy? He asked with a growl. Naruto rubbed his head, the information still going into his mind. I don't know. I heard voices inside my head, something about becoming the next sage, he said. The Kyubi was thinking hard about what the boy was saying. Could he be father's descendant or reincarnation? His natural chakra feels more smooth, controlled and larger than before. But why would his dojutsu appear now instead on the day he was born? Makes no sense unless. A loud grunt from Naruto broke the Kyubi's train of thought. Ah what the hell are these images and what's a jubi? He mumbled to himself. Kyubi decided to that he had no choice but to explain things. Yo kid listen up. The eyes you have belonged to the Rakudu Senen and if my guess is correct you must be his reincarnation so you're probably receiving your past life memories. The Kyubi said. For a moment Naruto ignored the pain in his head and looked up at the fox. Rakudu Senen? Who's that? Naruto asked confused. The Rakudu Senen or Sage of the Six Paths, was the most powerful human in existence. His powers and knowledge helped create ninjutsu, basically becoming the founder of the shinobi world and a god in many people's eyes. It's because of him why clans, ninjas and hidden villages are even here now. The Kyubi said proudly. Naruto titled his head to the side at the way the fox spoke of the sage. It almost sounded like he admired him. Anyway what can you tell me about these eyes? The. The Rinnegan. It's called the Rinnegan. The Kyubi said, and to be honest I don't know that much, hell I doubt the sage knew much about his eyes too. All I can say is that they give the wielder great chakra control, a large amount to be exact, can sense barriers, control all five natures, and also allows the user to yin yang jutsus, the most greatest of them was the sage's creation of all things jutsu. Naruto's eyes widened at that. Awesome. Are you saying that I can do all that stuff too? Then he frowned. Wait if I had this dojutsu all along then how come it didn't appear until now? First off, you may be able to use all five natures, but yin yang release is difficult to use so you might want to take your time with that. 
Also whilst it's possible you can use the creation of all things there is no guarantee that you can use it to the extent that the sage could so I would focus on the five natures first. As to why it's activating now, well my best guess is that the seal that the Yandaimi used to put me inside of you must have somehow sealed off the Rinnegan. But when that weird girl from the forest used that five pronged seal on you it must have activated your Rinnegan. Speaking of that seal it seems like it has gone away, probably because your massive chakra managed to overpower it. The Kyubi replied. Naruto nodded, taking all that in, which seemed to be easier for him now. Might be because of the Rinnegan. So wait, all these jutsus that I'm seeing in my head, I can do them all. Naruto asked, not wondering why he was asking the fox about this. But hey he seemed like a nice person and obviously knew a lot about these eyes. And probably that he didn't want a weak container either. The Kyubi thought for a moment before replying. Probably but I would suggest you practice using them for the month. And just the lower rank ones like C through B rank before learning the powerful ones. The fox replied before yawning. Anyway that's all I can say for now. You should probably wake up and get to training. Also say hi to that blue hair vixen of yours for me too. He said the last part with a chuckle before closing his eyes. Naruto got a tick mark about Hinata being his vixen before being pushed out of his mind and back into the real world. End of Mindscape The next few weeks Naruto trained like hell to master his new eyes. As the Kyubi said, he managed to master all five elemental techniques through C to B and a few A ranks by stealing scrolls from the library since they wouldn't let him in. He learned a few yin yang techniques but not so much that he could use them fully. With the help of his shadow clones, which Naruto discovered the true reason behind them, he managed to master two of the paths. Diva and Animal though not to the full extent of them. Speaking of which, Naruto discovered that he could hide the Rinnegan by shifting it back to normal eyes, though instead of going back to blue his eyes would be purple. It wasn't that it took a drain of his chakra, it actually gave him a boost in that department, not that he needed it, he just didn't want anyone to freak out and make some stupid claim that the Kyubi was possessing him or some shit like that. He even managed to create his own space-time ninjutsu similar to the Yandaimi. He even learned Shinken, the fighting style of his mother's clan the Uzumaki clan, the latter being quite a shock to him since he never realized that he had clan. Upon hearing that he took an interest in the art that his clan were known for, Fuenjutsu. Naruto also decided that a change of clothing was called for, but he knew that none of the stores would welcome him so he put on a double layer henge and set to work in finding some new attire. He stayed in the forest the whole entire month so no one could find him either and also so he could have some privacy. But on the third week Naruto decided to take a break and visit Hinata at the hospital. Of course that wasn't really easy since everyone there hated him. Oh come on I just want to see Hinata-chan. What the hell is wrong with that? Naruto asked the receptionist as he held the flowers in his hand. They were bouquet of yellow and white flowers. Liar. I know that you want to spread your demon taint on the patients here. The receptionist screamed. Naruto was about to retort when a familiar voice from behind spoke. Naruto. Said boy turned around and saw Kurenai Yuhi standing before him. Naruto smiled, knowing she could help him see Hinata. Kurenai sensei, thank Kami you're here, he said relieved. Are you here to see Hinata chan too? Kurenai didn't miss the ad suffix and suppressed a smile. Yes I am, and you? she asked. Naruto nodded and held up the flowers. Yeah I wanted to see if she was okay and give her these but this woman won't let me through he said the last part with a grumble. Kurenai understood why Naruto wasn't allowed to see anyone and gave the receptionist a glare causing her to shrink behind the desk. I'm sorry but he cannot see Hinata-sama due to obvious reasons, she stammered while trying to compose herself. Kurenai darkened her glare, and what reasons would those be? she asked darkly towards the receptionist. Said woman gulped and pulled out a piece of paper with the Hayuga symbol on it, Hiyashi-sama ordered that no one besides himself, Hinata-sama's sister and personal bodyguard and her sensei can see her. That's why this th I mean boy cannot see her. Kurenai snatched the paper from the woman and read it carefully and sighed. I'm afraid she's right Naruto, she said with a bit of regret. Naruto frowned and looked down for a moment. Then his head perked up and he said, then if it's okay could you give these to Hinata-chan and tell her I hope she gets better? He asked. Kurenai smiled and took the flowers. I would be glad to Naruto, but I think you should focus on your training if you're going to beat Neji. 
Naruto nodded. Yep I've been training very hard, he said before bowing. Well thanks again Kurnai sensei. I'll see you at the chunin exams. And with that he ran out the door. Two weeks later and so the final two weeks quickly came to an end. Naruto trained harder than before in the forest, however instead on creating new techniques he focused on the ones he already had and managed to create his own space-time ninjutsu called Mikado. The technique was so great and useful that even the Kayubi had to admit it was impressive, even better than the Yandaimi Hokage's Hiroshin. He also began practicing in Bojutsu and Kenjutsu and managed to purchase a good katana and iron staff while he was hanged. Soon enough the day of the finals had arrived. The stadium was filled to capacity and the genin all began to file into the stadium. Up in the cage booth, the Hokage, along with his student Jiraiya and the K's cage were looking down at the field. However only seven of the nine contestants were there the ones who were missing being Sasuke Uchiha and Dosu Kinuda. Soon the Hokage got up and spoke, thank you for coming. It is my honor to present to you the genin who will be competing for the title of Chunin. Saroboy said from his sit beside the case cage, the leader of the sand village. As he sat down he looked down at Naruto and noticed that he was dressed differently now. Gone was the bright orange jumpsuit replaced with black pants, a black jacket with a hood with an orange swirl of the Uzumaki clan on the back. Strapped to his back was a katana and he also looked a bit taller too and there was a bit of red in his blonde spiky hair. But what's different is his aura. Here is an thought as he looked at his surrogate grandson. Jiraiya was also looking down at his godson, wondering where he was all this month. He had hoped to train him for the finals but could never find him. I will be the instructor, a Janin said as he came up behind the genin. They all turned to look at him. He wore his headband backwards over his head, he wore the traditionally Janin cloths, but he had a senbon in his mouth. My name is Genma, and I'll be your proctor for the third part of the exam, he said. What happened to Hayate san? Naruto asked curiously. Don't worry about it. Now everyone else besides the first two combatants should head up to the waiting area, Genma said. As the other contestants walked up to the waiting area, Naruto took this chance to scan the crowd. To his joy he saw Hanada sitting beside Kiba and Kurunai. She still looked a little weak after her battle with Neji but did her best not to show it. Naruto closed his eyes and took a deep breath activating his Rinnegan. He opened his eyes and they fell upon the one person that he had been waiting to fight for the longest time. You should give up now Uzumaki and save yourself the embarrassment, Neji said with a tone of superiority. You can't win. It is your fate to fall before me, he said. Naruto turned to Genma, can we begin? he asked. Didn't you hear what I said? Neji yelled in anger at being ignored. Naruto turned his eyes toward Neji and even Genma flinched at the stone-cold stare he gave the Hyuga with his Rinnegan. Why don't you shut up? Naruto said in a deep voice as he flared a killing intent large enough to make a regular civilian pass out. The first match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hyuga, begin, Genma yelled. And in a blink of an eye, Naruto disappeared from his spot and reappeared right in front of Neji, shocking everyone. The Hyuga prodigy barely had any time to react before Naruto slammed a powerful punch right into his face, sending him flying backwards. Everyone was shocked, especially the Hokage, Sakura and all of Naruto's friends. That wasn't a shunshin that he just did, that was almost like the Hiroshin. Hiroshin thought as he looked down at Naruto in shock and awe. Jiraiya and the K's cage were also looking at Naruto with interest. But just as Neji was getting up Naruto began forming hand signs so fast that not even the Sharingan could read them. Kaden. Grand fireball jutsu. And he blew out a large fireball straight towards Neji. However Neji managed to use substitution with a log and managed to get behind Naruto. Now I got him. Neji thought to himself as he lunged his hand forward. But instead of hitting the blonde hair boy, it went right through, shocking Neji. What? Before he could react Naruto spun around and grabbed Neji's arm. Then he landed another punch into Neji's stomach, causing him to cough up more blood. Then Naruto headbutt him causing the Hyuga to wince in pain. Then Naruto released Neji and said, Shinra Tensai. And suddenly Neji was sent flying backwards again, this time by an invisible force. Neji got up again and pulled out a kanai, but saw that Naruto had disappeared again. Now where did he go? Neji asked when he suddenly saw a shadow over him. Naruto was now diving towards him with his sword raised. 
Fox double pounce. First pounce. Naruto shouted and brought his sword down as Neji brought his kanai up to block it. But instead the sword merely grazes the kanai and as Naruto landed he said, second pounce, and lunged the sword into Neji's stomach. Neji coughed out some blood at the impact and tried to strike Naruto, who instead dodged the attack and jumped backwards, pulling the sword out of Neji. The crowd couldn't believe what they were seeing. The demon brat who wasn't even breaking a sweat was soundly defeating Neji last rookie of the year in Hyuga Prodigy. The only people who seemed to be happy were Sakura, since Naruto was her teammate, Hiruzen and Jiraiya, proud to see how far he's gone, Hanada, because her crush was okay, and Kurenai because Naruto was making Neji pay for what he did to Hanada. Where's your fate now Neji Teme? Naruto asked with a grin on his face as he sheathed his sword. Neji growled at Naruto before he noticed the range that Naruto was in. Neji smirked and got into a stance and said, You're in my range. 8 trigrams, 64 palms, and struck Naruto quickly. 2 strikes, 4 strikes, 8 strikes, 16 strikes, 32 strikes, 64 strikes. Neji said as he finished off the last moves of his attack, only to see that Naruto wasn't phase at all. Instead, if Neji had been looking carefully, he would have seen that all of his strikes had gone through Naruto. H how is this possible? Neji muttered as he looked at Naruto's face and flinched. Naruto was glaring at him fully with his Rinnegan activated. This caused Neji to jump back but it didn't matter because Naruto raised his hand and muttered. Bansho 10-9. Then suddenly Neji was pulled towards Naruto by some invisible force, not even given time to react. Once he was close enough Naruto slammed his other fist into Neji's stomach and said, this is for Hinata-chan. Gankatsu. He shouted as he twisted his fist clockwise like a key with chakra added into the attack. This caused a hole to appear on both sides of Neji's jacket and made him cough up even more blood. Once Naruto was done he removed his fist and let Neji drop to the ground. Before Neji blacked out he heard Naruto say, Fate does not decide for you, you decide for yourself. And with that he walked away. The audience was stunned silent at what they witnessed. Genma however soon regained his bearings and announced. Winner Naruto Uzumaki, and with that the crowd roared in cheers. Well what do you think? Let me know if it's good and I'll continue. Mikado. God's Gate. Naruto's technique is a gateway that serves for teleportation, absorption, and tangibility and containment. Naruto's seals can open portals that either allow objects or people to be teleported somewhere else of Naruto's choosing or be trapped in his personal dimension and later on release at his will. Naruto can also open small but invisible portals from his own body thanks to the Rinnegan and allows him to avoid physical blows. Meaning that when something tries to hit him, Naruto can either absorb it to his personal dimension for later use, or have it go through one portal on his body and quickly out another, in essence going through him. The reason why he can't teleport it somewhere else is because it takes too much mental power to teleport the object person to an entirely different location. Naruto can only do that to himself and in order to teleport someone, something to another location, Naruto must teleport them via physical contact to his own personal dimension and then release them in either the same method or from his body in the chose location. The other option is that Naruto creates a seal formula for this technique and places it somewhere. Shinken. God Fist. The fighting style is when chakra flows through a person's body, not around it meaning it goes through the blood system acting as both an offense and defense. Offense meaning that the user's physical strength and speed is increased to tenfolds while their endurance and defense is increased similarly. It can only be used by an Uzumaki clan since they possessed strong stamina, bodies, and life force to use the fighting style for long term. If anyone else were to try and attempt it then their bodies would burn down from the inside, unable to withstand the chakra going through their bloodstream. Subconsciously. Small bits of chakra go through the Uzumaki members all the time, thus showing why they have just good healing factors. Kurenai smiled as she watched Naruto leave the arena while medics arrived to take Neji away. She wasn't really one who approved violence but in this case she believed that Neji deserved everything that was coming to him after what he did to Hinata. Hopefully this will change the brat's view on life. And if not then it was still good to watch. Speaking of Hinata, said girl was ecstasy that her crush won though she was blushing too. When Kurenai had brought the flowers and said who it was from she nearly fainted at the thought that Naruto made a blood vow to win this fight for her. 
She was so happy that Naruto won that she was clapping with a small smile on her face, something that Kuranai was happy for. She was finally showing her brave side. Even Kiba was rooting his rival for winning. I'm surprised Kiba that you would be cheering for Naruto, Kuranai said to the Inazuka. Kiba heard her and shrugged. Hey I would be pissed if he hadn't won Kuranai sensei. If he could beat me that there was no way Neji stood a chance. Holy crap Sakura. Where did Naruto learn to fight like that? Ino asked as she stared at the retreating form of the blonde and if she says so herself attractive boy. I honestly have no idea but I'm just glad that he won. Sakura said while on the inside she was very shocked of how fast the match went and how strong Naruto became over the last month. She looked up at Lee and noticed a look of awe on his face. What do you think Lee San, Gai Sensei? Lee looked at Sakura and said, That was an excellent display of power and youth that I have ever seen, he said with his trademark good guy pose. Indeed, my student. Gai said as he watched Neji being taken away. Naruto showed true strength comes from hard work and hopefully has changed Neji's view on life. But that's not the only thing that pushed Naruto to win. What do you mean, Sensei? Lee asked as Sakura and Ino also looked up at Guy. Guy smiled. It was clear that Naruto was fighting to avenge Hinata's defeat at Neji's hand. Such conviction to fight for another is one of the true ways to achieve great power along with hard work. The spandex wearing ninja said. Yosh. Lee said with fire in his eyes. Then I too will train harder to protect those who are precious to me and if I must, avenge them as well. That's what I like to hear my student, Guy replied. Cage booth. I must say that was an impressive show of strength Hokage Dono. I did not know you had such skilled shinobi. The case cage said in a calm tone but inside he was seething. How the hell was that brat able to get so strong? And his chakra, they were off the roof. I must watch him carefully or he might become a threat to my plans. Hiruzen smirked. Yes Naruto is indeed an extraordinary case and one of our most unpredictable shinobi though I admit I was unprepared for the fact that he knew space-time ninjutsu. Then he looked at Jiraiya who was rubbing his chin. What do you think Jiraiya-kun? Jiraiya looked at his sensei and smirked. I say the kid's a natural, not prodigy natural but the working hard till you drop kind of natural. I think I'll go and see him. And with that he shunshin away to meet with his godson, hoping to find out what he did during this past month. This left Hiruzen to his own thoughts towards a certain blonde hair boy, Minato. You would be so proud of your son right now. Competitor's box. As Naruto walked up the stairs where the other competitors were, he noticed that they were all giving him looks, some of suspicion, some of curiosity, and some of interest. However, Naruto noticed Gara was giving him a sadistic smile, which no one else seemed to notice. I didn't think this kid was much of a threat after seeing him fight in the preliminaries, but damn, I can't believe of all that power he's been hiding. Konkuro whispered to Tamari. The Suna Kunoichi nodded in agreement and continued to look at Naruto. Shikamaru was thinking inside of his head. Damn this is troublesome. I wouldn't have guessed that Naruto had that much power, but now that I see it I think it would be easier just to forfeit, though if I did that mom of mine would kill me, troublesome woman. Can Shikamaru Nara and Tamari Sabaku come down to the arena for the next match? Genma shouted. Shikamaru sighed. Troublesome. He muttered and made his way down to the arena. Tamari too made her way down but as she passed Naruto she gave him a wink. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this but said nothing. It basically goes the same way as it did in the canon. As Naruto watched the two fight one another he felt a presence from behind. Turning around Naruto could see a faint trace of chakra, meaning someone was hiding. Making sure the others weren't looking Naruto headed towards the source and once the others were out of hearing range he said, I know you're there. You can come out now. Soon the person, who was none other than Jiraiya, appeared with a smirk on his face. Not bad Gaki, there are only a few who could detect me but never so easily. Naruto shrugged. Well I've been practicing on my sensing abilities Jiraiya-san. Still getting a compliment from someone like you is nice. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. So you know who I am. Though seeing how the kid had the legendary Rinnegan, he was not surprised. Well at first he was, after all. How many people have the dojutsu of the founder of ninjutsu? But Jiraiya managed to keep himself composed while conversing with the blonde. When I was lil, I would always sneak into the old man's office and one time found a photo of him and three kids who were about my age. I asked him who they were and he told me they were his students, 
the Sanines of Konoha. That and also I saw you multiply times peeking on the women in the hot springs where the owners would yell at you, screaming your name and you were just standing besides the Hokage during my match, Naruto explained. The Toad Sage was impressed. He had heard that Naruto wasn't that very bright but apparently he still had some smarts in him and now some good observation skills. Well Gaki I'm impressed, I never expected you to be so observant, that along with those skills you just showed were a double surprise for me. By the way where did you learn such an advanced space-time ninjutsu? Naruto thought about this carefully. While he knew that Jiraiya was loyal to the village and to the Hokage, despite his bad habits, he really didn't know the man and also he wasn't ready yet to reveal his dojutsu. For now he would just keep quiet about it. Sorry I can't tell you except I did it through sweat and hard work. Naruto replied. Oh, and why's that? Jiraiya asked. Simple really, Naruto said. Though you may be one of the old man's students, and by your posture you don't seem like someone who would be against me, I honestly don't know you enough to reveal such secrets. After all, if I asked you some of your secrets would you tell me? Naruto asked. Now Jiraiya was really impressed. Not only was the kid strong and observant but he was careful too. Very good traits for a shinobi to have. Fair point, but tell me, did your sensei Kakashi help you in your training? No, Naruto said quickly, shocking the Sanin. To be honest he hasn't taught me or my other teammate soccer anything except for chakra control and tree climbing. He's been spending most of his time teaching Sasuke. For example after the preliminaries he left me with another instructor, Ebisu, to teach me about the basics while I had a seal on me that messed up my chakra. Heck I don't know where they are right now. So everything I learned I did it on my own. To say Jiraiya was shocked was an understatement. Was this the same man, Kakashi Hitaki, the student of the late Yoindame? He would have never guessed that Kakashi would show favoritism, even if it was the last Uchiha. He would have to notify the Hokage about this especially if the man registered his team into the Chunin exams unprepared. Well that was pretty much it Gaki. I should probably head back to the old man now. Naruto nodded. Okay but can you give him this for me? Naruto asked as he pulled out something from his pocket. When he got it out Jiraiya saw that it was a round golden medallion with the symbol of a whirlpool on it. What is it? Jiraiya asked curiously as he took it. A ceiling medium eye design. I don't know why but I have this strange feeling in the back of my head that something bad is going to happen. The old man is like a grandfather to me so I'm just worried. Naruto explained with a serious look on his face. Jiraiya could tell that Naruto was deadly serious about this and his concern for the Hokage was legit. Sure Gaki I'll be sure to give it to him. Anything I should know so I can pass it on to him? Naruto nodded. Yeah, tell him not to use it unless it's a dire situation. That medallion only works once since it's a prototype. The Sanin nodded and Shunshin off. With that done Naruto returned to where the other competitors were and saw that the match was already over. Tamari was declared the winner due to the fact that Shikamaru said he was low on chakra so he made a tactical surrender. Naruto however kept his eyes on Gara, who was still staring at him. Hey Karama, is it just me or does something seem wrong about that Tsunagai's chakra? After the whole event last month, Naruto had tried to speak with the Kayubi more in order for them to work better together. After all if they were stuck together they might as well work together. So far they managed to create a telepathic link between each other, allowing them communicates without raising suspicion. I too sense foul chakra similar to my own in the kid. My best guess is that he's the container of the Ichibi, Shukaku. He's one of the more unstable of my brethren, which would explain the kid's lack of sleep. Kurama replied back to Naruto. Lack of sleep, how can you tell? Naruto asked confused as he heard Gara's brother, Konkuro, forfeit his match against Shino for some reason. Well I can tell that the kid hasn't slept in years due to the shadows under his eyes. Also judging by the seal used to hold the Ichibi must lack mental blockers allowing the nut job more control of the kid's mind and body when he sleeps. That and Shukaku was always the type who liked to mess with his containers, Kurama explained. Naruto nodded before sensing two familiar chakra signatures. Looking back down at the arena and in a swirl of leaves, Kakashi and Sasuke appeared, the latter wearing different attire now. Naruto suppressed a groan at the idiocy of these two, showing up late and then making a flashy appearance. Unknown to him Hiruzen and Jiraiya, the former after hearing the lack of training that the Cyclops gave his two other students, 
were also disappointed as well with Kakashi's lack of regard for being on time. Suddenly Naruto got an evil idea as he saw that Kakashi had his favorite orange book in his hand. As he pulled out a senbon from his leg pocket he said to Kurama, Hey Kurama, watch this. Then Naruto, after adding fire chakra into the senbon, shot it towards the orange book so fast that no one even saw it hit the book and began slowly burning it to ashes. Kurama chuckled at this and of course Kakashi was oblivious to this as he was talking to Genma. Sorry for being late, I hope Sasuke hasn't been disqualified, Kakashi said. Genma rolled his eyes. Be grateful that your match was last otherwise the Hokage would have probably had Sasuke disqualified. At least your other student made it on time and put on a good show by beating the Hayuga kid. Good job training him by the way. Kakashi nodded though confused on what Genma meant. He would have asked when he suddenly felt his right hand getting hot. He looked down and his eyes widened in horror as he saw his precious book being slowly turned to ash. No, he shouted in an un Kakashi like manner and began to desperately trying to save his book in a comedic fashion. This earned sweat drops from everyone while some of the older Kunoichis who knew what the book was were laughing. After the interesting entertainment, a depressed Kakashi shunshin up to the stands where Sakura was. Genma shook his head with a smirk on his face before saying, Will Gara Sabaku please come down to the arena? Gara merely gave one last look at Naruto before doing a sand shunshin and appeared down in the arena. Crowd. As Kakashi appeared in front of his fellow Jonans and his only female student he still had a depressed look on his face for the loss of his book. Asuma patted his back sympathetically. Don't worry Kakashi I'm sure you can just get another one, just make sure that next time they don't get burned up, he said the last part with a snicker, followed by Kurinai and Anko. Kakashi ignored them and looked back down at the arena, where Sasuke and Gara had already begun fighting. Breaking out of his depression Kakashi asked, so how did Naruto do? It was amazing. Sakura said to her sensei, he completely decimated Neji, I've never seen anyone move so fast besides Lee San and the way that all of Neji's attacks just went through him like he wasn't even there was incredible. Kakashi raised his visible eyebrow, went through him, what do you mean by that Sakura? Kakashi asked. Kurinai answered for the pink hair girl. Basically whenever Neji tried to land a hit on Naruto his attack would just phase right through him. It wasn't Genjutsu that was for sure so I think it might have been some kind of space-time ninjutsu. Kakashi's eye widened in shock just as Asuma asked. Yeah I have to admit I was impressed with the kid. What have you been teaching him that he managed to create such a jutsu? Kakashi said nothing, which brought forth an uncomfortable silence amongst the gathered people there. Curious Kurinai asked, Kakashi have you been training any of your students? Kakashi didn't respond, and judging by Sakura's shameful look was a good enough answer to everyone that Kakashi hadn't taught them crap besides Sasuke. The Jonans shook their heads in disappointment at Kakashi's lack of teaching skills. Suddenly an Anbu appeared behind Kakashi and said to the Cyclops, Hokage-sama requests your presence after this match, concerning one Naruto Uzumaki Kakashi-san. And with that he teleported, leaving a nervous Kakashi Hitaki. Back with Sasuke's match said boy was constantly trying to land a hit on Gara, but the Suna Nin was almost impossible to hit with his sand moving all around him. In fact now that Sasuke got a good look at him, Gara didn't really seem all that interested in him and was instead looking up at the competitor's box at Naruto's direction. Does he see Naruto as a threat more than me? Sasuke thought angrily as he dodged a wave of sand only for another wave to come at him. In retaliation Sasuke pulled out three kanai with explosive tags on them and threw them at the sand wave. The explosion caused the sand to be pushed backwards giving Sasuke some space. Then Sasuke jumped onto the arena wall. Acting quickly Sasuke began forming the necessary hand signs and gripped onto his left hand when lightning began to gather around it and make bird chirping noises. Guy who saw this looked at Kakashi in shock. Kakashi my rival don't tell me that you taught Sasuke Chidori? Kakashi rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Hey, well it turned out he had an affinity for lightning so I thought I'd teach it to him. Guy shook his head in disappointment for the fact that Kakashi taught only one student and went as far as to give him his signature technique. Well let's hope it's worth it, though I think Naruto would probably kick his ass anyway, Asuma said. That got Kakashi's attention. Oh, and why's that? He asked curiously. Asuma smirked. 
Well you can tell that he's someone that doesn't go down without a fight and the fact that he managed to create such a jutsu as that space-time technique proves that Naruto has reached a whole new level than Sasuke has. The Sarutobi said. Kakashi noticed how the other Jonins were agreeing with Asuma, making Kakashi feel kind of bad for not training Naruto and leaving him with Ebisu. With Sasuke he charged forward towards Gara with his Chidori crackling as he ran towards the Sun Nin. However Gara acted with great speed, first he formed a ball of sand to protect him from Sasuke's attack and increased the ball's mass and added more wind chakra to it, making it stronger. This proved to be a good idea because the moment that Sasuke's Chidori struck the ball of sand, it barely went through, what? It didn't work? Sasuke thought as he tried to figure out what happened. But before he could jump back some sand grabbed his right leg and threw him backwards. Pathetic. Gara murmured as the sandball dropped, revealing the red head boy. Show me your worth Uchiha. Gara said as he lifted Sasuke into the air with his sand. Then without warning Gara slammed Sasuke against the arena wall and then again onto the ground hard. Then he sent wave after wave of sand towards Sasuke, causing the Uchiha to move frantically to dodge the attacks. But unknown to him a tentacle of sand had managed to grab his leg and slammed him on the ground again, this time making a crater from the impact. Everyone watched in horror as the Uchiha prodigy was being brutally beaten by the Suna Nin. Up in the cage booth the, K's cage, was seething that his future vessel was having such a hard time with his opponent. And by the looks of it Gara wasn't even all that interested with Sasuke. Gara had just slammed Sasuke against the wall again and prepared to finish him off when Genma and Kakashi just appeared in front of the Uchiha. Enough, he can no longer fight. The match is over, Genma said. Gara, however, ignored them and gathered all the sand he had and launched one final attack, intending to take out both Sasuke and the two Jonins, when he was suddenly struck right in the chest and crashed in the opposite of the wall, leaving a decent sized crater on it. Everyone was shocked by the sudden attack but were even more shocked by the person who attacked the Suna Nin. Naruto? Kakashi asked. Said boy was standing before him with his right fist raised as he remained in his battle stance, without looking back at his sensei, Naruto said. Sorry Kakashi sensei but we have other problems. And just as he said that a genjutsu began to be cast onto the entire arena, causing people to fall asleep except for a few Jonins, Shunins and Jenins who managed to dispel the Genjutsu. Then the K's cage and his guards lunged at the Hokage and Jiraiya while Otto Nins and Suna Nins appeared amongst the civilians and began attacking the Konoha Nins. What the hell is this? Kiba asked as he and Hinata got down as Shuriken and Kanai flew over their heads. Kuranai had a Kanai in her hand so she could deflect the projectiles heading towards her students. An invasion, were being invaded by Otto and Suna. She said as Asuma smacked an Otto Nin that was about to attack her to the side. We need to regroup with the others in the arena, Asuma said. What about the Hokage? Anko asked as she looked up at the cage booth and saw that the K's cage was none other than her former master Orochimaru and was facing against Hiruzen. They were also surrounded by a purple barrier too that seemed impenetrable. Nothing we can do for him now. Our best option is to deal with these guys first. Besides Jiraiya-sama is with the old man so he should be fine. Asuma said his voice filled with confidence in his father's abilities. They were soon joined by Gai, Lee, Sakura, Ino, Choji, and Tenten just as Kakashi appeared carrying Sasuke who looked pretty beaten up. Then Shino and Shikamaru joined up with them, the latter mumbling, troublesome. Kakashi-sensei, is Sasuke-kun alright? Sakura asked as she moved towards her sensei and teammate. Kakashi nodded as he got Sasuke to his feet. Yeah but right now we have other problems. That Gara kid went after Naruto who's leading him away from the major population of the village. But the two other Suna Nins also gave chase. Sasuke. The Uchiha looked up. This is an A rank mission, take Tenten, Shikamaru, Kiba and Shino and help Naruto. The rest of you go and help evacuate the civilians. We'll cover your exit, now move. Hi. All the Genins shouted as Guy created a hole in the wall for the Genins to use and get out to follow Naruto. Kuranai used a Genjutsu to conceal them so they wouldn't be spotted leaving. As Sasuke's team went towards the direction Naruto headed, the rest headed off towards the closest place where civilians were being attacked. Unknown to them Kabuto had seen the whole thing from a hiding position. He knew that with the invasion happening retrieving Sasuke now was their best chance. 
but during the Naras and the Suna Kunoichi's match, Orochimaru had relayed orders to Kabuto to capture Naruto, as he was interested in how the Kayubi boy required his new powers. Turning towards a group of twelve Otto Nins, he gave them a nod and soon all of them made haste after the team of Genins. With Naruto, damn, bastard doesn't give up. Naruto thought as he dodged another air blast fired from the now transformed Gara. The top half of Gara's body was now covered in sand and his eyes had changed into a dark yellow. His head now resembled something of a mutated raccoon and his arms were now covered by large claws of sand. Finally he had a large single tail swinging side to side from behind. Face me Uzumaki. Mother demands your blood. Gara shouted as he fired a barrage of sand. Naruto used his push ability and deflected the attack with ease. Then he landed on a tree branch and turned to face Gara. They were far enough from endangering the village. Which means I can go all out. Naruto thought. Okay Gara, you want a fight? I'll give you a fight? Naruto said as he formed some hand signs while Gara lunged at him. Futon, great breakthrough, and soon he launched a powerful blast of wind, which hit Gara with full force, sending him flying. But Gara managed to use his large sand claws to grab a tree and regain his balance. Gara began to laugh manically. You amuse me, Uzumaki. I feel that your death will finally prove my existence. Gara cried as he launched his own wind attack, a large bullet made of wind. Unable to use his space time jutsu against a fast attack, Naruto jumped down from the branch just as the attack ripped apart the branch he was on. Naruto soon landed on the ground and looked up just as Gara dived towards him. The Uzumaki boy decided to take this battle up close and charged towards the Suna Nin. Activating his Shinken, Chakra began to flow through Naruto's blood, as he dodged a swing from Gara's claw and Naruto landed a punch into the redhead's stomach. This caused the Suna Nin to cough out some air as he crashed into a tree. However, Gara was soon getting back up and fired an air bullet at Naruto. However, Naruto raised his hands and said, Shinra Tensai, and an invisible force pushed back the attack, along with the trees nearby and Gara, were all pushed back by the force. But Gara managed to extend one of his sand hands and grab Naruto's leg and pull the blonde with him. Die! Gara shouted as he tried to reach for Naruto's head with his other hand. But Naruto managed to pull out his katana and stabbed Gara's sand hand, hopping to cut it off. He managed to cut off Gara's sand hand, but before he could pull it out, Gara tore it off, damaging the metal of the blade and threw it to the side. As Naruto jumped back to gain some distance from Gara, he whined to himself. Oh man, and I had paid good money for that sword, he said. However, his thoughts were cut off when a large blast of wind struck him hard, sending him towards a tree. But Naruto managed to add some wind chakra to his feet and slow his movement, allowing him to land safely on the ground. But just as he was getting his focus, Naruto saw a large wave of sand coming at him, along with Gara laughing manically in the background. Acting quickly, Naruto formed two clones, one on each side. Then he slammed his hands together, Shinra Tensai. Naruto yelled as an invisible barrier appeared around Naruto and his clones. When the sand wave struck the barrier it was separated and began going around the blonde hair boy. Naruto managed to keep this up for a few minutes before he began to feel the strain of holding the barrier beginning to weaken. But then the clone on his right began forming some hand signs. Sutan. Water encampment wall jutsu and then he shot out a powerful stream of water, which began to form a large wall of water in front of them that collided with the sand. Not only was the water pushing the sand back, but it made the sand a lot heavier for Gara to control. The other clone soon went underground and headed towards Gara, who was still launching a barrage of sand towards Naruto and his other clone. With one clone already heading towards Gara underground and another holding back the sand for a little longer, the real Naruto jumped into the air, forming some hand seal. Futon. Beast tearing gale palm jutsu, and then fired a powerful blast of wind in the form of a claw from his right hand towards Gara, who was about to get out of the way when suddenly he felt something grab his legs. He looked down to see the third clone's hand out of the ground, their grip on his ankles, stopping he from moving since it was using chakra to hold Gara in place. With that, the Suna Jinchuriki could only raise his hands in a useless defense as he was struck by the powerful gust of wind. Naruto landed on a patch of wet sand as he felt both of his clones dispel while he was looking at the dust gathering that his attack made. 
when he felt that he had won the sand underneath him began to shake violently and following it right after was a large puff of smoke. Then a foot of sand nearly crushed Naruto if he hadn't jumped out of the way in time. Naruto managed to land on a tree a few feet away and what he saw shocked him. Standing before him, even taller than the trees, was a giant one-tailed tanuki. Ah shit, Naruto mumbled to himself when the Ichibi looked down at him. His eyes had no emotion in him and even though they were a different color, the way they looked it was like the biju wasn't even conscious, or at least in control. Maybe Gara is still in control. Naruto thought when he suddenly he saw Gara, who was on top of the sand beast's head form a hand sign. Then his body slumped forward, hanging lifelessly, while at the same time the Ichibi's eyes suddenly came to life and then it shouted, Yahoo I'm free and ready to kill. Well this sucks. Naruto said as he watched the now awakened Biju letting out a mad laugh. Then Shukaku looked down and spotted Naruto standing on a branch. Crap. Ha. Huh. And speaking of killing here's someone for me to kill right now. Shukaku laughed as he prepared to pound Naruto into the ground. Time to take this battle up a notch. Naruto thought as he clapped his hands together. Summoning Jutsu. And he was consumed by a large puff of smoke. Shukaku still launched his fist downward when suddenly a large armored fist emerged from the smoke at top speed, hitting the one tails right in the face, sending the demon back a few feet. When Shukaku landed, the impact caused the trees nearby to be torn off the ground and blown away. With the other sand siblings and Naruto's backup team, the genins all stumbled a little due to the impact from the Ichibi's crash. They were only a mile away from where Gara and Naruto were fighting but when Sasuke's team had caught up to them Konkuro and Tamari were forced to face them. But now their focus was on what had caused that small earthquake. This gave Tamari and Konkuro some time to move back a couple of spaces away from the Konoha Nin as they turned towards the source of the earthquake along with the Konoha Nins. What they saw made the Konoha Genin's eyes widen while the Suna Nins turned pale. Shit Gara's already gone into full demon mode. Konkuro said as he watched the giant biju get back up. But then their attention went back onto the large tower of smoke as it began to clear, making them even more shocked at what emerged from it. W what the hell is that? Kiba stammered. Emerging from the smoke and around the same size as Shukaku was a being that was covered in heavy grey samurai armor with a horned samurai helmet over its head and a silver blue demon mask over its face, showing only its yellow eyes. It wore gauntlets with spikes on them. Same as on the knee pads with a black cloak underneath the armor along with black gloves. It had a short fur cape on its back and a katana in its right hand. Look, on top of the creature. Shino commented. Everyone looked up and they were all shocked to see that the one on top of the giant warrior monster was none other than Naruto. The blonde hair boy had a serious and confused look on his face as he looked at his summon. Did Naruto summon that? Tenten asked as she stared at the creature's weapon in awe. There was no reply. Everyone was just too shocked to respond as they gaze at the two large beings. However not even Naruto knew what was going on. He had intended on summoning some kind of animal to fight Shukaku. Instead he got a giant of some sort. Whoa, this is kind of cool. Naruto murmured before looking down at the giant. Hey big guy. You have a name or something? Naruto asked. In response Naruto heard a voice inside of him, but he could tell it was from the giant. My name, young sage, is Mugen Sengoku. It is a pleasure to fight once again, side by side with you, even if you're not my original master. It took Naruto a few seconds to register what the giant meant. This guy used to fight with the original Rikudu Senen. Naruto summarized in his head before focusing back on the topic at hand. Nice to meet you too Mugen Sengoku. Mind lending me a hand? Before the giant could reply Shukaku made his move. He slammed his hand against his belly, coughing out a powerful air bullet from his mouth straight towards Naruto. But the creature, Mugen Sengoku no Kyojin waved its sword and sliced the bullet in two, avoiding taking any damage and charged towards the biju. Oh want to get up close and personal EH? Well bring it the fuck on, Shukaku roared as he charged towards his opponent. When the two were finally close enough Shukaku waved his large tail like a flail, hoping to knock the giant off his feet. But Mugen Sengoku smacked the tail to the side with one arm and then brought his sword across Shukaku's chest, leaving a large cut in the biju's body. Konkuro and Tamari gasped as they saw the Ichibi roar in pain and staggered back. Ugh! You bastard! I'll get you! 
Shukaku began to say but was cut off when Mugen Sengoku delivered a powerful punch to the Ichibi's face and then kneed the sand demon in the stomach. This caused Shukaku to fall on its back while Naruto and Mugen Sengoku stood over it. Everyone was shocked at how easily Naruto and his summon were easily overpowering a biju, creatures made up infinite amount of chakra. Tamari and Konkuro were the ones who were the most surprised because they had never seen their brother take such a beating, and he was in his full biju mode. Just how strong was Naruto and that giant? Naruto stared down at the fallen biju, contemplating on his next move. He didn't want to kill Gara, as he had a pretty good idea what was the cause of Gara's bloodlust. But that would prove difficult because in order to stop Gara, he would have to find him somewhere on Shukaku's body. Kurama had mentioned that if Gara fell asleep, then the Ichibi would have full control over his host, which meant that Naruto would have to wake the redhead up. His thoughts were broken when he saw a giant sand claw heading towards him. Acting quickly, Naruto had Mugen Sengoku grab the claw with his left hand, stopping the attack. But that gave Shukaku an opening to grab Mugen Sengoku's right wrist and then wrapped his large tail around the giant's neck. Shit! Naruto cursed out loud as he tried to free Mugen Sengoku. Haha! Got ya now asshole! Now die! Shukaku laughed manically as he opened his mouth widely. Soon red and blue chakra began to gather around his mouth, forming a giant purple ball. Naruto's eyes widened, his Rinnegan could see the chakra compressing around that ball. If something like that hit him at close range, he would not survive. Acting quickly Naruto commanded Mugen Sengoku to move its left hand towards the chakra ball, just as Shukaku ate it. Die! The Ichibi roared and released the bomb. But it was grabbed by the Kyojin's hand, holding it back from exploding. Everyone, Shukaku, the Suna Nin and Konoha Nin, watched in awe as Naruto's summon held the tailed beast bomb in place, though now and then its grip would weaken. Finally with a loud roar from both Naruto and Mugen Sengoku, the Kyojin squeezed on the chakra bomb before completely crushing it, snuffing it from existence. Shukaku was gaping like a fish, he couldn't believe someone managed to compress a tailed beast bomb. He was so distracted by this that his grip on Mugen Sengoku's right wrist slackened, allowing the Kyojin to free itself and cut off the Ichibi's arm. Shukaku roared in pain as his arm was cut off, but he still managed to growl, God damn it. But his voice was soon cut off when he felt a feeling of death surrounding him. When he looked back at his opponent his jaw dropped. The giant appeared to be ten times larger than the biju and its yellow eyes appeared to be almost looking into Shukaku's soul. The Ichibi never felt such fear in his life as Mugen Sengoku slowly raised its sword. What, Shukaku murmured, though everyone managed to hear it. What the hell are you? The giant paused, waiting for Naruto to respond, curious of what it would be. He was not disappointed. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, shinobi of Konoha, member of the Uzumaki clan, Naidame Rikudu Senen and the next Hokage. The blonde shouted proudly, and this is your wake up call Gara. With that Mugen Sengoku brought his sword down hard onto Shukaku, who exploded into sand. The observers watched in awe as the biju gave out one last roar as the sand flew into the air and came back down like a hailstorm. Then acting quickly the giant lunged his other hand forward and grabbed an unconscious Gara. Okay now bring him up here big guy, Naruto said as he pulled out two pieces of paper with the word seal on them. Good thing I looked up Fuinjutsu last month. Naruto thought to himself as the giant brought Gara close to the blonde. A few seconds later Naruto had put the seals onto Gara's chest, suppressing Shukaku's chakra and influence so Gara couldn't go on a rampage anymore and get a good sleep for once. Naruto Dono, Mugen Sengoku said to Naruto through the boy's mind. I still sense a malevolent power nearby. I shall remain here to aid you until that source has been evaporated. Naruto nodded. Got it big guy, just lead the way. As the giant began walking back towards the village, with Gara in his hand, he passed by Gara's siblings and Naruto's friends. Said blonde spotted them from his spot and yelled, Hey Teme, Mugen Sengoku and I are going to deal with something. So stop starring and grab those two Suna Nins, they're Gara's siblings. With that Naruto continued heading forward while ignoring the still shocked look on the others. With Hiruzen the Sandem Hokage did a flip backwards in order to avoid a powerful kick from the reincarnated Shodem Hokage. Then he lunged his bow staff forward, striking Hashirama in the chest. But the dead Hokage merely brushed it aside and charged forward, 
the wound already regenerating. Currently Hiruzen and his student Jiraiya were facing against the traitor Orochimaru, and his two summons through Edo Tensai, Hashirama Senju, the Shodem Hokage and his brother Toborama Senju, the Naidame Hokage. Somehow Orochimaru managed to obtain the Kinjutsu of the second and was now using it to fight against his former sensei and teammate. Hiruzen was battling Hashirama while Jiraiya fought Toborama and now and then Orochimaru would pop in to join the fight. Still if Jiraiya was not with him then Hiruzen would have been in bigger trouble, fighting against two past Hokages and one cage level shinobi. Now and then Hiruzen managed to get a glimpse of the battle outside the barrier that surrounded him, from what he could tell his shinobi were holding out and giving the invaders trouble. He had a feeling that Kakashi and some of the veteran Janins were coordinating the others within the arena and there weren't many that could match copycat Kakashi. But the real problem is here. Hiruzen thought as he swung his staff again, forcing Hashirama to move back a few feet. If we can't find a way to deal with these two then no one in Konoha will survive this invasion, especially if soon as Jinchuriki returns. Speaking of Jinchuriki, Hiruzen thoughts went back to Naruto. Before Orochimaru had lunged at him the Sandame Hokage managed to catch a quick glimpse of the young Uzumaki leading the Sunanin away from the major population of the village. Despite his recent developments, facing an unstable Jinchuriki would not be easy and the Hokage silently prayed for his surrogate grandson, wait, didn't Naruto give something to Jiraiya that was for him? Reaching for his hip pouch he could feel the medallion that Naruto had made. He didn't know but he felt like the time to use it was now. Naruto-kun, Hiruzen thought as he began to pull it out, I put myself in your hands. But just as he pulled out the medallion several tree roots appeared and began wrapping themselves around Hiruzen. This caused the Sandame to not only drop his staff but the medallion as well. Shit! Hiruzen cursed as he was lifted into the air by the roots. He looked down and saw Hashirama already releasing his hands after forming the snake seal. Hiruzen! Emna, the monkey king, shouted changing into his true form. He was about to go aid his old friend before he felt something around his ankles. Enma looked down just as more tree roots ensnared him as well. Damn it! He got us! Enma said as he looked at Hashirama. Sensei! Enma sama! Jiraiya shouted but was kicked hard in the chest by Toborama, sending the toad sage flying backwards and then skidding across the roof. The Anbu outside the barrier could only watch helplessly as Orochimaru and his two summon approached the trapped Sandame Hokage. The snake Sanin chuckled as he held the sword of Kusanagi in his hand. Looks like I finally caught you, sensei. Orochimaru said casually as he walked closer to deliver the final blow. Boom! A large explosion caught everyone's attention, stopping them from whatever they were doing. Everyone turned towards the source of the explosion and they all let out gasps, even the three Hokages and the two Sanin. Mugen Sengoku had finally reached the village and was now walking through the streets and over ninjas and civilians alike. Riding on top of his head was Naruto and an unconscious Gara. Naruto looked down and couldn't help but laugh at the gaping faces of the onlookers. And he thought that nothing should surprise a shinobi. But his focus went back towards the arena where he saw the large purple barrier and a mini forest within it. Hey Mugen Sengoku is that the place? Naruto asked while pointing at the barrier. Mugen Sengoku followed his finger and nodded. Indeed that is the source of the evil. Come Naruto Dono, let us purge it. Hell yeah. Time to kick some more ass. Naruto shouted as Mugen Sengoku walked towards the arena, completely oblivious to the vain attacks that Suna and Otto Nins were using. The only time he made any acknowledge of them was when he had to smack them out of his way. Thanks to his large size Mugen Sengoku managed to reach the arena in record time with everyone looking up at him in awe and fear. WW what the hell is that? Orochimaru shouted as the being was looking down at the occupants within the barrier. The snake Sanin had lost his usual cool because for the first time, after feeling the tremendous power radiating from the Kyojin, he felt a little bit of fear. Jiraiya and Hiruzen were merely too much in awe to speak or even move. But theirs along with everyone else, widened their eyes as Mugen Sengoku raised his left hand above the barrier. Oh fuck! That shithead isn't going to do what I fucking think he's going to do is he? Tuyuya shouted just as Naruto yelled, now Mugen Sengoku. Upon command Mugen Sengoku plunged his fist straight towards the barrier. With his tremendous size and power, the barrier shattered automatically as the fist made contact. 
The impact caused everyone to either jump out of the way or was sent flying backwards. Ironically as he was sent flying in the same direction as his predecessors, Hiruzen managed to grab the medallion and point it at the Shodem and Naidem Hokages. The moment the medallion faced the two reincarnated Hokages, the swirl symbol opened up revealing a black space inside. Then from the black space, a powerful gust of chakra was unleashed and struck the two deceased Hokages. The results were that the Senju brothers' souls left their reincarnated bodies, thus breaking the jutsu and reducing the bodies to ash and dust. I incredibly, Hiruzen thought as he landed. He looked at the medallion just as it began to close. It cancelled the technique just by pointing it towards the technique, truly a device that only an Uzumaki could create. His thoughts were cut off when he heard a familiar voice yell, Damn you Serutobi. Orochimaru yelled as he lunged towards his former sensei. Without his bow staff as well as being caught by surprise, Hiruzen made a desperate attempt to defend himself by raising his hands. However that did not stop Orochimaru as he plunged his sword of Kusanagi into Hiruzen's chest, causing the elder Hokage to cough up blood. Die! Orochimaru yelled as he rammed Hiruzen into the ground but doing so caused his right shoulder to touch the still open medallion. The results that the medallion began to such in the snake Sonin's life force, something that said man felt automatically. W what's happening, Orochimaru yelled as he tried to pull away from the medallion, which he was finally able to do so but the cost was that his entire right arm, from the hand to the shoulder, turned a decaying purple and had gone limp. No, no, Orochimaru shouted in horror as he jumped away from a wounded Hiruzen his sword in his left hand. However his focus shifted when he felt a shadow on him, he looked up just in time to see Mugen Sengoku's fist slam right into him, crushing almost all of the snakes on his bones as the man was sent flying miles away from Konoha. Orochimaru Sama. Saken cried as he and the rest of the Sound Four fled the arena and out of Konoha to retrieve their master. Hokage Sama. Sensei. The team of Anbu and Jiraiya both landed next to a wounded Hiruzen who was breathing heavily. The wound from the legendary sword was deep and right through Hiruzen's chest. As the Anbu were tending to their Hokage, Jiraiya looked back at the village to see that Naruto and his summon had already gone to aid the rest of Konoha's forces in driving out the invaders. One thing is for certain Jiraiya thought as he looked up at Naruto, his godson with a look of pride on his face. Things will definitely be different from now on. Jiraiya now understood why his sensei hated council meetings they were very annoying especially for people like the civilian council. The invasion had ended rather quickly with the defeat of the Ichibi Jinchuriki, and with their trump card captured, Suna was in quick retreat. Though the real reason why the invading force retreated was because of Naruto's summon. You couldn't blame them really. A giant samurai being that could take down a fully released biju, along with sending one of the legendary Sanin flying with a punch, it wasn't really something anyone would want to go up against. The next few days after the invasion, Jiraiya took command since Hiruzen was heavily injured from fighting as well as the wound he took from Orochimaru. Jiraiya also took possession of the medallion that was used to seal the Shodem and Naidame Hokages so that certain people, like an old one eye warhawk, didn't get a hold of it. During that time was mostly spent on tending to the injured, both their own and those of the enemy mourning the dead and most of all increase the village's defenses so that none of the other villages got any bright ideas. Jiraiya also declared martial law so that way things could be run quicker than dealing with the council, especially the civilian council and elders were demanding to know about Naruto's summon or whatever it was. Hell even Jiraiya wanted to know but he knew that his godson deserved some time alone especially with all the shit he had to deal with over the years. The toad sage made a note to give certain people a visit later on. Jiraiya also knew what the boy was hiding and shocked him when he found out. The Rinnegan. Sure the kid somehow managed to hide it physically but Jiraiya, who had experience with the eyes chakra due to his interaction with another wielder, realized that his godson had awakened the legendary dojutsu. If Danzo had found out about that, then the Warhawk would use every possible means to get Naruto under his control, with the civilian council wanting to turn him into a breeder. Jiraiya had already informed his sensei about it and the two decided to keep it to themselves and confront Naruto about it later at a time that would be better, and perhaps a third person if she decided to return to the village. Besides that the boy had disappeared after working on Gara's, in how Naruto kindly put it, fucked up seal, 
It had seemed that Naruto had taken up his mother's and clan's pride in seals as well as their dislike for faulty ones. When he was done checking that everything was good he left as if Yami himself was after him. Their addiction to seals was even greater than my addiction to my research, the toad sage thought to himself with a small smile as he stood to his sensei's side within the council room. The reason the age Hokage was out of the hospital was thanks to two people, Anko Mitarashi and Naruto Uzumaki. Anko, who was very loyal to the Sandame Hokage for defending her during her life growing up after her sensei's betrayal, managed to create an antidote from her personal poison, the same poison that her former sensei's sword was coated in. After all poison users needed an antidote for the poison they made. Naruto, who saw the Sandame Hokage as a grandfather, had set up a seal that he learned from reading books of the Uzumaki clan. While its purpose was not meant for healing it did help block out the pain from the injuries, kind of like a sedative, allowing Hiruzen to move around albeit carefully and it had to be replaced once every three days so that way the old man wouldn't keel over in pain once it wore off. However after that was done Naruto had disappeared off again, though he did give the Sandame Hokage a talisman with a seal on it, saying that by putting some chakra into it would alert Naruto that the Hokage called for him. Jiraiya's musings were cut off when Hiruzen began pounding on the desk with his gravel, along with letting out some killing intent to silence everyone. Once that was done did he speak, first off I like to thank my student Jiraiya for taking charge during my recuperation. I'm also grateful that the damages, both people and buildings alike, were not so extreme as I originally feared, and for that I extend my thanks to brave Shinboi that risked their lives for this village, especially to Naruto-kun and his summon. The clan heads all nodded in agreement, while they didn't want to insult the rest of their forces, if it wasn't for Naruto's summon defeating both Suna's Jinchuriki, the snake summons, Orochimaru and almost half of the invading force, the damages done would have been far greater. Even if he did not know it Naruto Uzumaki had earned the respect of the majority of the village's shinobi forces. The civilian side however, how can you be thanking that demon? A civilian council member, whose name Hiruzen had forgotten or never really bothered to remember, shouted. It shows that it is has become more powerful and will probably use its summon to destroy us all. This earned shouts of agreements from the rest of the civilian council while the clan heads glared at the irrational fools. But that all stopped when the room was flooded by a wave of killing intent from the old Hokage. The power of said intent affected every single inhabitant in the room in different ways. The civilian members were having trouble staying conscious while a few passed out since they had little to no experience of such a feeling. The Anbu hidden in the room were having breathing difficulties and it took a lot of effort for them to remain hidden. The clan heads, all of them veterans second only to the elders, Jiraiya and the Hokage, went stiff as their bodies froze from the massive killing intent flooding the room. Even the elders and Jiraiya had gone pale and beads of sweat could be seen sliding down their skin. What seemed like an eternity the killing intent died down but it might as well have been still there when everyone saw the furious look in Hiruzen's eyes, a look that once again reminded everyone present that the Sandame Hokage was called the Professor and the Kami no Shinobi for a reason. And while it was mostly directed towards the civilian side and oddly the elders, it was clear that his next words were meant for all of them, whether they deserved it or not. I will only say this one more time and only once, Hiruzen said, yelling out the last part sending a clear message that if they didn't get it then they were both idiots and likely good as dead. As I said for the past 13 years Naruto-kun is not the Kyubi. And before you people say anything irrational or idiotic then let me ask you this. If Naruto-kun really was the Kyubi then do you think he would take the abuse he had to suffer for so long? Wouldn't he just kill all those who attacked him or scorned him? And relating to his summon, he could have very well had it attack the village along with our enemies and there wouldn't be a damn thing any of us could do about it, but did he? No, so I don't want to hear any more of this or else? He paused for a moment before continuing, not bothering with waiting for all that to sink in and wasn't in the mood in listening to any more arguments or pointless complaints. Back to the topic at hand regarding the invasion I've decided to step down as Hokage. This of course shocked the entire council with many voicing their objection to it, asking why the sudden decision and who would be his successor. A few minutes later Hiruzen called for silence and spoke. The reason is that during the invasion I realized that I'm not as strong as I used to be and frankly I'm old. A new Hokage, someone young and strong is needed to lead this village and such I've chosen Suande Senju as my successor to become the Godem Hokage. 
Upon saying this there were several murmurs going across the room. That was actually a pretty good choice since Tsunade was not only one of the three Sanin, trained by the Sandem Hokage, but she was also the granddaughter of Hashirama Senju, the Shodem Hokage and founder of the village, meaning she was also the grandniece of Toborama Senju, the Naidem Hokage. Along with those she was hailed as the greatest medic nin of all times and was admired by Kunoichi and medic nin everywhere, even from rival villages. However there was one variable to this. But Hokage-sama, Tsunade-sama has been away from the village for years. I have to wonder how you're going to convince her to come back? Inoichi Yamanaka asked. Hiruzen nodded, understanding the clan head's concern. My other student Jiraiya here will go and bring her back. Also per his request shall be bringing someone with him whom he believes will help convince Tsunade to return to the village to take the mantle. And who is this person Hokage-sama? A civilian council member asked. That's classified along with other subjects concerning retrieving my student. Hiruzen said before changing the subject before anyone could protest. Now concerning the Chunin exams we managed to select several of the contestants for the rank of Chunin despite the interruption of the invasion. However those will be announced later. The final piece before this meeting is that I've retrieved word that carpenters and other workers from nearby nations, a lot especially from wave country, have arrived or are on their way to assist with the repairs to the village. We'll work out the bill later once things have settled down which hopefully by then Tsunade will have returned. That is all for today. A few seconds later as the last member of the council left, leaving only Hiruzen and Jiraiya to be the last to leave, the Sandame Hokage said to the walls, Cat, calling out the purple hair Anbu female. But instead of her it was another Anbu, one wearing a boar mask. Boar? Where is Cat? The Hokage asked, confused as to why Yugo did not appear, actually he didn't sense her presence in the room at all. Apologies Hokage-sama. The commander thought it would be good idea to give Kat a day off to check on Hayate-san. Boar replied while still kneeling in front of the Hokage. Hiruzen nodded, understanding the logic in Tiger, the Anbu commander, decision. Yugo was very much relieved when her lover Hayate Gekko, who had disappeared during his mission on spying on Kabuto, the auto spy, had reappeared in the hospital. Turns out the man had been saved by Naruto when the boy was returning home from training and with a few good shadow clones and smoke bombs, the young Uzumaki managed to save the Tokubetsu Janin before Hayate was given the fatal blow from his attacker. That's understandable. Anyway could you please bring Kakashi Hitaki to my office in about two hours? No excuses or tardiness if he comes a second late then tell I'll have him demoted to Chunin. Understood? The Hokage asked with a firm tone in his voice. Understood Hokage-sama, Boar said, feeling sorry for the Sharingan user as he shunshin away. With Naruto, the Rinnegan user turned redhead, he had changed it sometime later on after the invasion since for some reason he thought it would be a good way to honor his Uzumaki heritage and he wanted at least something similar to his mother appearance-wise. Was currently in the outskirts of Konoha staring up at an old and worn-down temple of his mother's clan. Kurama had told him about this place because while sealed inside Kashina, Kurama had figured it would be better to reveal everything to Naruto since that way Kurama's living conditions in the seal would be better and according to the fox he didn't want a weak or stupid container. She had visited this place daily during her younger days, sort of to find closure with the one thing that was left of her village, Uzushiogakure. That and there was apparently something in there that Kurama thought Naruto should probably know. Taking a moment to look at the temple's design, and making a note to fix it up later, Naruto walked in to see at the center of the temple, a podium of some sort, where dozen of oni masks hanging on it but unlike the rest of the temple, they all looked intact though dusty. In front of it were black flames that were still alit and looked to be almost protecting the masks kind of. The masks were also hanging beneath three connected symbols of the Uzumaki clan too. Suddenly Kurama spoke to him through their link. Kit, do you see the mask on the third row, the third on a cross from the right to left? Naruto zeroed in on said mask and when he did he sensed chakra coming from the mask and realized that Kurama had wanted him to get it. So pulling out a staff from a scroll he had. Naruto managed to retrieve the mask while avoiding the black flames too. What's with this mask anyway? Naruto asked Kurama. It was during my time when I was sealed into Mito. Kurama started off as Naruto pulled the mask off from the wall and towards him over the black flames. Wearing that masks allows the user to use the dead demon consuming seal. Release. 
which allows you to release the soul sealed by its counterpart, the dead demon consuming seal. You mean the same seal dad used on you? Naruto asked in surprise as he grasped the mask with his hand. Though nothing happened Naruto could still feel the eerie chakra resonating from it. Yes the very same seal. If you put it on it summons the Shinigami who then possess before cutting open its stomach, releasing everything and everyone that was sealed into it, such as your father and even my yin chakra. Kurama replied before quickly adding. Also be advised, since the Shinigami possesses you while cutting its own stomach, you too receive wounds as well. Though with your clan's healing combined with mine you might be able to survive it. Naruto nodded before a thought appeared. Wait did you wanted me to get this so I could free your yin chakra? He asked in an accusing voice. The thought came to mind and it would improve our chances of not getting killed if I had my full power, though we would also be freeing your father too. But to be honest getting the mask was just a bonus and also I don't feel like having its powers used against me. Kurama replied with a shrug. You mean us? Naruto corrected. E.H., same thing. Kurama replied with a yawn. A tick mark formed on Naruto's head and he muttered about dumb foxes before asking his next question. Well we can talk about getting your yin chakra back at a later date. He paused as he felt Kurama's surprise that Naruto was thinking of doing it, causing the Rinnegan user to smirk a little. But if this wasn't the reason why you made me come here then what is? Naruto asked. If my memory serves correctly then when I was sealed inside of Mito, she brought something here when she moved to Konoha. It was a relic of the old man that the Uzumaki clan had but decided to hide within this temple in the event if their village fell, which ironically it did, Kurama said. This caught Naruto's interest and why wouldn't it? An item belonging to the founder of ninjutsu had to be valuable. So how'd I get it? He asked the fox. With the masks actually. Now that there is an vacant space up there I want you to rearrange the masks in the order that I tell you to, understood? Kurama instructed. Naruto nodded and soon the fox began telling Naruto what to do. The redhead used his staff to move the masks in the areas that Kurama instructed him to. It was hard to do what with Naruto using a pole over black flames but he managed. And after a few minutes of moving a total of nine different masks did something happen. As the final mask was placed the wall began to glow with lines coming down from the spots that Naruto had placed the masks on. The lines all went downwards towards the black flames. When they disappeared within them, said flames suddenly began to part, much to Naruto's surprise, and revealed a rectangle-shaped box made out of some kind of metal. As the chest began to rise, it slowly stood up until it was standing straight in front of Naruto. Once it was done several seals on the chest began to glow before quickly dispersing one at a time. When the last one vanished the door opened, parting ways as it revealed the contents of the chest. The contents that Naruto saw him left him in a state of shock and awe. Being held up by a stand was a katana though judging by the size of the sheath the blade might be five feet long. The sheath was a dark gray, with red dots with swirls going down it. It had a golden round handguard and the handle itself was wrapped in black and white striped cloth. At the bottom of the chest leaning against the sword were four scrolls. Slowly Naruto reached forward to touch the handle but the moment he did he recoiled back when he felt the immense power that surrounded the sword. A few seconds of recovering from the shock, Naruto, with determination in his eyes, lunged forward and with great speed grabbed the handle, pulling the sword out of the chest and then quickly pulled the blade out of its sheath. The blade was still sharp and smooth, the silver on it reflecting the light coming through the temple. Naruto couldn't help but marvel at it. What is this? Naruto murmured to himself. That, Kurama began, slightly startling Naruto who had been so engrossed with the sword that he momentarily forgot about the fox. Is called Reijin Jinryu, Spirit Blade Divine Flow. The first sword to be forged with chakra metal. It is also the most powerful one in all of history. It was forged by Hamura Otsutsuki, the old man's brother and the grandfather, you could say, of the Uzumaki clan and Hyuga clan. Why is that? Naruto asked as he examined the sword further. The reason is that it, unlike other chakra weapons that depend on wielder's chakra to flow through it, this sword absorbs natural energy and can contain it as well as use it too. But the real power of that sword is that it can use nature manipulation and shape manipulation and unleash them at a whole other level when the natural energy is absorbed becomes perfectly synced with the wielder's chakra, Kurama explained. 
Naruto was surprised that this sword absorbed the power of natural energy instead of his own like all weapons with chakra metal require. But as he focused more on the sword he could feel hell even see energy around him being absorbed into the blade at a fast rate, like the sword was hungry and restless after being in the temple for so long. After a while Naruto decided that it might be good to head back towards Konoha, lest the Hokage start sending out Shinobi to look for him. So he sheathed the sword and grabbed the four scrolls that were with it in the chest. When all the contents were removed from it, Naruto saw in shock that the chest closed on its own and returned to its originally position underneath the black flames, with said flames now forming back into their original form, covering the hidden compartment once more. Two hours later, Ichiraku Ramen stand. You want me to come with you on a mission? Naruto asked as he looked up from his fifth ramen bowl towards the toad sage Jiraiya. Naruto had been enjoying several bowls of his favorite miso ramen and then planned on seeing if Hinata was available to hang out with him. That's when Jiraiya appeared and told him of the mission Hiruzen gave them. You heard me Gaki, Sensei needs me to find an old teammate of mine and bring her back to the village. He agreed that I could bring you with me too. Jiraiya said taking a quick glance at the kid's eyes, change of hair color and the nicely designed sword strapped to his back. He noticed that Naruto was contemplating on this and so the Toad Sage said, While we're traveling I could teach you some a powerful technique that is even stronger than the Chidori Kakashi taught to Sasuke. That seemed to have caught Naruto's attention. Alright so what are we waiting for? He yelled as he finished off his bowl and paid Tucci before jumping off his seat walking past a smirking Jiraiya. However as he walked past the older male, Naruto's smirk turned into a sinister one as he planned on getting some answers from his godfather once they were away from the village. Donzo's underground root base. The one-eyed warhawk sat in his private office as two of his root agents, one being assigned to watch Jiraiya while he was in the village and the second one to watch Naruto, were giving their reports. So Jiraiya has taken the Kayubi Jinchuriki with him to find Tsunade. Danzo asked the first agent. Yes Danzo-sama, I had decided to return and inform you instead of pursuing Jiraiya when he left the village. I figured that I wouldn't be able to keep myself hidden when he was outside Konoha and I suspected he would give me a slip. The agent said emotionlessly. Danzo nodded silently, accepting the reasoning. Even he had to admit that having his agents tail Jiraiya when he was traveling was unwise. The Toad Sage would have been more on guard outside Konoha and most probably sense any of his root agents that he would have sent. That and the Sanin could easily give them the slip. The skill came with being a spy master and infiltration master. Then he turned towards the second agent. And what did you discover while watching the Kayubi Jinchuriki? Danzo asked. The agent bowed deeply. My apologies but between when he was working on fixing the seal for the Ichibi Jinchuriki and leaving with Jiraiya, I had lost sight of him and his chakra signature. The agent said as he had been assigned to watch Naruto since he was a skilled chakra sensor and a Hyuga main branch member. Danzo frowned before speaking. You lost his signature? You mean he somehow concealed his chakra? That shouldn't be possible the Jinchuriki was never good in chakra control. I make no excuses Danzo-sama but the boy somehow managed to hide his chakra that not even my Byakugan could find it, let alone any trails to follow. The agent said without lifting his head. If he was able to hide his chakra signature then does that mean he somehow realized he was being watched? Danzo asked himself. Or does it mean he merely wanted some privacy? He paused from his thinking before looking back at the agent. While this is unexpected and disappointing that you lost sight of your target, I will not punish you and I expect that it will not happen again. Yes Danzo-sama, the agent said. Tell me did the boy look different when he reappeared? Danzo asked. The agent paused for a moment before replying. Not physically if you're wondering Danzo-sama except when I saw his eyes they were purple now instead of blue and his hair was red now. Though he did have a well-designed sword strapped to his back. But his chakra appeared, different, the agent said. Danzo raised an eyebrow. Different how? Do you mean the Kayubi's chakra? He asked. No sir the Biju's chakra and the boy's chakra were both separate and their colors different. The agent said before getting a nod from Danzo to continue. I meant that his own chakra reserves were greater than before he disappeared and were still growing. I have a feeling that it might have to do with that sword that he had. The sword? Danzo asked. Yes Danzo-sama from what I could tell the sword was absorbing some sort of green energy that was around it and the boy. 
as the green energy went into the sword it turned blue and appeared to be merging with the boys on chakra reserves, increasing them to already greater heights. In fact if I could describe it, his chakra looked like a pillar that was slowly growing higher and higher, the agent commented. Interesting, Danzo thought before he realized something. You said that his reserves were greater before he disappeared. What do you mean by that? I'm already aware that he has cage level chakra even without the Kyubi. What I mean Danzo Sama is that when he reappeared for the Chunin finals his chakra was much larger than before, at least having chakra equaling two cages. But now when he reappeared with that sword increasing his chakra I would have to say that it might be even on the same level of a biju perhaps more. The agent replied. Danzo's lone revealing eye widened at that aspect before narrowing in thought. I see, thank you. You two are dismissed until further instructions. The root commander said earning a hi from the two agents who then shunshin off. Danzo was soon left alone to his thoughts, all of them focused on the residential Jinchuriki. The boy is far more powerful than I had originally imagined but how did he acquire that strength? Did he always have it or did he get it sometime during the month before the Chunin exam finals? And then there's that summon of his and now some sword absorbing natural energy? Danzo thought to himself, trying to at least figure out what the boy's secret was. He couldn't go to Hiruzen nor could he have one of his agents spy on him. Ever since the invasion the Sandame Hokage has become more secretive, making sure no one had a chance to spy on him. He was especially tight lip over anything concerning Naruto and Danzo suspected that the only other person that had a clue would be Jiraiya. Hiruzen trusted his student enough to let him in on anything important, and the Toad Sage seemed to have a great interest in the Jinchuriki boy for some reason. Then Danzo's thoughts went back the mentioning of the boy's eyes. Eyes don't change for no reason, unless the boy has a dojutsu of some sort. However I don't recall the Uzumaki clan ever having anything but Chakra Keke Jenke and the sometime elemental Keke Jenke. Either way I can't do anything against the boy since Hiruzen is fond of him and now that fool Jiraiya. That and he is gaining some favor from the shinobi council and clan heads and doing anything against him publicly would put me in a bad light most likely. I must watch carefully and see how things turn out when the boy and Jiraiya returned, whether or not they bring Tsunade with them. The Warhawk thought to himself. Outside Konoha with Jiraiya and Naruto Jiraiya didn't know why but every time he looked at Naruto, who was in front of him, the Toad Sage felt the shadow of death looming over him. The Toad Sage had only felt this feeling three times before. The first time was when he was beaten to near death by Tsunade when he peeked on her, when he and his teammates were almost killed by Hanzo during the second shinobi world war and the third time is when Kashina almost killed him when she learned that Jiraiya had used hers and Minato's first time as inspiration for his Icha Icha book. But he couldn't help but be curious about the sword strapped to Naruto's back and where the kid got it from too. That and confront the kid about the Rinnegan. Seeing how they were far enough from the village Jiraiya decided to take a quick stop. Alright kid I think we can stop here for now. There are actually some things I need to ask and talk to you about. The Toad Sage said to the young Uzumaki. When Naruto stopped and turned around, Jiraiya once more felt the shadow of death creeping towards him. But the Toad Sage brushed it off as he heard Naruto say, Actually there was something I've been meaning to ask you too. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow with his curiosity of what the kid wanted to ask helped him ignore the feeling of death approaching. Okay then shoot kid, he said calmly. Naruto slowly stared up at the larger man with his Rinnegan visible and glaring a hole at Jiraiya as he spoke these words, I'm curious to know what you've been doing the first 13 years of my life, godfather. And when the toad sage heard these words and his eyes widening, Jiraiya knew why he felt the shadow of death over him. And when he saw what he thought was an image of Kashina Uzumaki standing behind Naruto, her hair floating in the air when she was pissed, Jiraiya knew one thing. He was so screwed. Konoha. Hokage Mansion Hiruzen felt a brief shiver run up his spine. Images of a certain redhead woman enraged as she struck an unfortunate fellow appeared in his head. But he brushed it off as he returned back to the task at hand. Kakashi Hitaki who was standing before him. Thank you for coming on time Kakashi. The Hokage said to the Jonin. Well I figured it must have been pretty serious since you sent two Anbu to find me, Kakashi said. That and they said if I didn't come on time I would be demoted certainly helped. Kakashi thought to himself but didn't say out loud. Yes I wanted to talk to you about your genin team. I've learned some stuff that are quite disturbing, 
Hiruzen said in a serious matter. Like what Hokage-sama? Kakashi asked, surprised by this revelation. Well for one I've heard that you haven't really been acting like a sensei. Hiruzen began. According to the reports you only began teaching them tree walking during that sea turned a rank mission in wave. I'm curious to know what you had been teaching them before that and then afterwards. Kakashi looked hesitant at first before replying, well before the mission to wave country I was teaching them teamwork in order for them to work better together. And afterwards the same thing so they would be prepared for the Chunin exams, he said. Judging from the look his leader was giving him that wasn't the answer Hiruzen wanted. I see, he said before pausing. Kakashi I'll be straight with you from what I heard your ability to lead, let alone teach, is coming into question. The Sandame Hokage said flatly. Hiruzen saw the Jonin's visible eye widening but didn't give Kakashi a chance to speak. Now while I understand how important teamwork, it's also important to increase their individual skills too. And even if the wave mission was AC rank, ignoring the fact the client lied, you should have still have given your students at least some training to protect themselves because according to the report they were nearly killed by Chunin level missing Nin. Something like tree climbing and even water walking should have been taught at the end of the first month of the team's creation. A team unprepared for a C rank mission, let alone an A rank, would have been nothing but a burden and would have gotten them, the client and even you killed, which from the reports nearly happened. The Hokage took a breather before continuing, not letting Kakashi defend himself yet. And then there were the days after the mission before the Chunin exams. You didn't give them any more training to protect themselves and still sent them into the Chunin exams where they could have died in the forest of death. And that would have been your fault, the teacher not properly training his students, no theirs. I have also received reports that throughout the whole time since this team's formation you have been neglecting your students Sakura Haruno and Naruto Uzumaki in favor of Sasuke Uchiha teaching him various fighting styles and ninjutsu, your Chidori for example, which is a B-rank assassination jutsu, something that shouldn't be taught to a newly made genin. And during the month break before the finals, you completely threw Naruto to the side, giving him to an instructor that while not biased of him, was not completely fond of him all to focus solely on Sasuke. What's worse is that you completely ignored your third student who, even though she didn't win the preliminaries, should not have been left behind and you could have least given Sakura something to do for that month. I'm really starting to wonder what was going through your head at the time. Hiruzen said finally taking a break from his scolding, waiting for Kakashi to say something to defend his reasons. After a few minutes of silence the Sandame Hokage concluded that Kakashi had nothing to say. So instead Hiruzen spoke. In this situation I would have to demote you to Chunin, disband your team or give them a new instructor. However right now Konoha is in a vulnerable situation because of the invasion and thus that is my main focus for right now. When Jiraiya-kun and Naruto-kun come back from their mission I will announce those that made Chunin and the fate of Team 7. You're dismissed. The Hokage said in a stern tone. Kakashi said nothing at first, then he lowered his head and silently walked out of the room not even having the book he's usually seen with either. Hiruzen merely watched the Jonin leave, knowing full well that Kakashi had a lot on his mind right now. Kakashi is going to have a lot to think about right now, I just hope Jiraiya and Naruto find Tsunade soon so things here can get worked out. Then when he looked at the large piles of paperwork he added. And so she can take over this damn job and I can free of this dreaded curse of paperwork. The Sandame Hokage thought with rage and depression. Outside Konoha walking away from the village in the forest just a mile or two away from the main road, two men wearing long black cloaks with red clouds on them and conical straw hats with small ornamental torques and tassels hanging down over their faces could be seen. Their cloaks were a bit dirty, indicating that they were in a fight recently but besides that they appear perfectly fine. The taller one, who also had what looked like a broadsword strapped to his back, looked down at his partner. So the Kayubi isn't in the village right now, he asked as if confirming something. His partner, who was a few inches shorter, replied with a monotone voice, yes from what I've learned from Kurinai-san and Asuma-san during our confrontation the boy went with Jiraiya of the Sanin on a mission outside the village. Also apparently his hair color has changed to red now Kisame. Jiraiya of the Sanin E.H. The taller figure named Kisame mused, and then his voice spoke with a bloodthirsty anticipation that matched his bloodthirsty grin that was hidden by his hat. Sounds like this could get interesting, don't you agree Itachi? The smaller person, now named Itachi, merely let out an, 
HN, not to differ from a certain genin. Then as he raised his head you could make out his eyes, which had turned from simple black to a fully developed sharingan, with three black tomos altogether. Naruto let out a sigh as he lied on the hotel bed, thoughts racing through his head. It had been a few hours since his talk with Jiraiya, and by talk meaning Naruto unleashed godly fury at his godfather, said man not even able to defend himself from Naruto's barrages of both taijutsu and ninjutsu. And it wasn't that the toad sage wanted to explain his actions to Naruto or that he didn't try to defend himself, it's that Naruto was a lot more skilled than Jiraiya had originally presumed and he was unable to react to any of the young Uzumaki's attacks. Fortunately Naruto managed to calm himself down before doing any lasting damage but he hadn't even bothered to listen to the toad sage's excuses or reasons since Naruto knew that they would have been pointless and worthless and all he said to Jiraiya is that he denies the man as his godfather. Naruto also added that he already decided that he wouldn't be signing the toad contract since Naruto had a feeling Jiraiya would try to get him to do it. Even after looking at the depressed man Naruto didn't feel anything for Jiraiya. True it might be a little harsh but Naruto was sort of in the right to be angry and unforgiving, especially what his life had been due to Jiraiya not being there for him. They decided to stop at a small bustling town for the night before moving on. This is how we find Naruto, lying on the hotel bed that they took while Jiraiya was off gallivanting with a woman he saw. Naruto figured that the older man was doing it just to get his mid off what happened and maybe to give the redhead some room. Maybe I should go outside and get some training, get my mind off things. Naruto said to himself as he grabbed his sandals and put on his shades. That's when there was a knock at the door. Outside Naruto's room Itachi and Kisame both waited patiently outside the door to Naruto's hotel room. Kind of odd for men of their status, which was being wanted s rank missing Nin, with Itachi being wanted for killing his entire clan in a single night, leaving only his little brother alive but they were confident enough that they could capture the target quickly enough without drawing any attention. Itachi had already dealt with Jiraiya by using a woman he had put a genjutsu under to distract the Sanin. Now all they had to do was capture Naruto and their mission would be done. But right now no one was responding to Itachi's knock. You sure the brat is in the room Itachi-san? Kisame, the blue-skinned swordsman asked. Positive Kisame, my Sharingan detected Naruto's chakra along with the Kayubi's chakra. He's still in the room though he might be asleep. Itachi said though something was bothering him. Something doesn't feel right. I can still detect Naruto-kun's chakra inside but why does it feel like something's blocking my Sharingan, Itachi thought. But before he could make any more of it Kisame acted, tired of waiting. Well if the brat ain't going to answer then I'm busting down door. The former member of the Seven Swordsmen said. Pow! Just a second or two after Kisame said that, a loud noise and a gust of wind erupted and the door was blown off its hinges. Kisame was also gone too, the door had struck him and both of them were sent flying backwards through the wall of the hotel. Itachi, who had been standing to the side and out of the door's path, merely stood in his spot, blinking once, then twice and then a third time while trying to figure out what just happened. He took a moment to look at the whole Kisame's body made before turning to look at the doorway, only to be greeted with Naruto, wearing shades right in front of him. Itachi's eyes widened as Naruto focused wind chakra into his right fist and then shouted, Funryu Kenju, jet pistol. Several blocks from Hotel Kisame grunted as he felt his body crash into the ground. Fortunately knocking into twelve stands lessened his fall so his injuries weren't that bad. But still, the damn kid sure packs a punch. Kisame muttered as he got up, Samahadi still in hand. Another crash appeared right beside him and looking the blue-skinned swordsman saw that it was Itachi, sporting a bruise on his left cheek. You okay Itachi-san? Kisame asked his partner. Though the young Uchiha could take a beating, Itachi wasn't really much of a frontline fighter like Kisame was. Itachi cracked his neck to get rid of the stiffness before saying, I'm fine Kisame but it seems as if this will not be as simple as we thought. You got that right! Naruto shouted as he suddenly appeared right before them. Shinrai Tensai, the Uzumaki shouted as he sent the two surprised Akatsuki members flying once more. Naruto used Mikado again to go through another portal to catch up with his opponents. This time however Itachi and Kisame were prepared. They managed to land more gracefully this time, though they were now closer to the city's outskirts, and separated as Naruto approached them. Sweden. Mazurapa, violent water wave, 
Kisame said as he finished forming the hand seals and then fired a powerful burst of water right at Naruto. But Naruto merely raised his left hand and used Prada Path to absorb the approaching water. What the hell? Kisame exclaimed as he watched his technique be absorbed but Naruto used his shock as an opening. Futon. Daitopa, great breakthrough. The powerful wave of wind struck Kisame and sent him further away from the city. Itachi narrowed his eyes as he watched what transpired just now. That was an impressive absorption technique, the best I've ever seen. Still it could present a problem if he can absorb anything I'll have to test it from a distance. Itachi thought as he pulled out several shuriken. Throwing the shurikens at Naruto Itachi formed hand seals. Kaden. Hosenka no jutsu. Phoenix sage fire technique. And fired a barrage of small fireballs that covered the shurikens as they all flew towards Naruto. Naruto shifted his attention from Kisame and focused on the oncoming fire attack. He was about to raise his hands to absorb the swarm of fireballs when his Rinnegan spotted the hidden surprise within the fireballs. Shit! Naruto said as he quickly shifted to Diva Path. Shinrai Tensai! And an invisible wave of gravity scattered the fireballs and shuriken away from him. Itachi watched it with interest. I suppose I forgot he could do that. But at least I confirmed that he could only absorb chakra or elemental techniques, not objects like shurikens. Kisame and I might be able to use that to our advantage. Itachi's thoughts were cut off when Naruto suddenly appeared before him. The two soon entered in a fight of taijutsu with Naruto having activated his Uzumaki clan Shintai and was now using Shinken against the older Uchiha. With the chakra flowing through his bloodstream and enhancing his physical prowess, Naruto was pushing Itachi back. Itachi was rather shocked, he was by no means weak in terms of taijutsu as his skills were at Jonin level, despite not using it a lot. So having someone shorter than you and younger too was very surprising. His Sharingan could see the chakra flowing through Naruto's blood and he had heard of the Uzumaki's Shinkan fighting style from his mother, who was friends with Kashina Uzumaki, but still he didn't think it would be that of an effective fighting style. Itachi had to be careful, as he was sure that some of those punches and kicks Naruto was dishing out would seriously injure him. His theory was proven correct when Naruto managed to slip through his defenses and land a hard blow at Itachi's stomach. The Uchiha coughed up blood as he was sent skidding backwards several feet from where he was hit. Naruto didn't have any time to relax as a shadow fell upon him. Taking his taijutsu fight with Itachi to his advantage, Kisame opted to attack Naruto from behind, Samahadi raised. I'm going to shave your legs off brat, Kisame yelled as he brought his sword down. But Naruto reacted quickly, pulling out Rage and Jinryu to block Kisame's strike. The two swords met, causing a small burst of energy to be released. The energy created multiple cracks in the ground around them with a crater forming underneath them. Oh, Kisame said, I Naruto's sword with interest. That's a pretty interesting blade you got there. Where you'd get it? He asked. That's none of your concern. Naruto yelled as he managed to win the wrestling of blades against Kisame, pushing the former Kiri Nin back a few feet. Itachi who had just recovered from Naruto's devastating punch earlier soon joined the man. There was still some blood going down his chin and it appeared his stomach was still bothering him, but both Itachi and Kisame still seemed battle ready. Naruto. Kurama said through Naruto's mindscape. As much as I hate to admit it if this battle keeps going you'll be at a disadvantage. Abundance of chakra aside these two have more experiences than you and will sooner or later overpower you. I suggest you activate Rage and Jinryu. Naruto subconsciously raised an eyebrow. Are you sure? I wanted to try out its true power but not against S rank shinobi like these guys, he replied. There is little choice in the matter. I know you originally sent these guys outside the town's perimeters in order to avoid causing casualties but this is also the best chance to try out the sword. Kurama replied. Though I should let you know that the old man was able to use all five elements at once, since this is your first time you should probably use one element at a time. Fine, Naruto said as he closed his eyes and gripped the sword's handle with both hands. He soon began focusing his chakra and the chakra within the ancient sword. Itachi and Kisame noticed Naruto's odd movements but were unsure of what to do at first. After a moment of deliberation Kisame finally decided to attack first. But before he could even take a step, a large amount of chakra burst out from Naruto in waves, causing cracks in the ground near the Rinnegan user. W what the hell? 
Kisame shouted in surprise as he used Samahadi to shield his face from the onslaught of the wind hitting him, caused by the chakra Naruto was releasing. Itachi however was watching the boy with his Sharingan and was shocked at what he was seeing. A separate chakra source was emitting from the sword before slowly merging with Naruto's. Both were incredibly large and only became bigger when the two merged with one another. H how is this even possible? Itachi asked himself. A weapon shouldn't have its own chakra source, even if it is made out of chakra metal. It can't be the Kyubi as the Biju's chakra would be emitting from within Naruto-kun's seal. It's almost like the sword is, alive. After a minute or two of silence Naruto's eyes snapped open, his visors being blown off, revealing his Rinnegan. However his eyes were the least of the two Akatsuki members' concerns as the blade was soon covered with wind chakra. Then Naruto raised the blade and yelled, Reijin Jinryu, and brought the blade downwards, releasing a powerful gust of wind straight towards the two Akatsuki members. Itachi managed to get out of the way but Kisame still got caught in the blast of very sharp wind current. He managed to take less damage by blocking with his sword but still he got sent back quite a bit. Meanwhile Itachi tried to get around Naruto but the Uzumaki quickly caught onto his plan. Swinging his sword, Naruto released even more wind in the form of a mini tornado, striking Itachi on his left side. The Uchiha was knocked to the side by the spinning air but he managed to land gracefully on the ground thanks to years of Anbu training. But the moment he landed Naruto appeared before him, his sword already ready for another swing. Raising a kanai Itachi tried to block Naruto's swing but that did little for the gust of wind released by Reijin Jinryu. The Uchiha prodigy was blow back with several rips in his cloak followed by numerous cuts too. Finally gaining some distance Itachi formed hand seals. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Fireball Technique, and the Uchiha released a large fireball from his mouth. Watching the large projectile coming towards him Naruto shifted tactics, he changed the attribute in his sword and fired a torrent of water. Fire and water met head on and both cancelled each other out in a large steam of mist. Itachi seemed amazed of what he just saw. So the sword can release other elements too, not just wind. But is it just the five basic chakra natures, or can he use the sub elements too? Itachi wondered. Naruto, however, grunted as he tried to regain his balance. He hadn't realized how hard it would be changing Reijin Jinryu's attributes. I need some more training with this thing. Naruto muttered to himself. But just as he finished his sentence, something struck him at the side, sending him skidding across the ground. Kisame, gripping Samahadi, had a sneer on his face which was pretty bruised up along with his attire, courtesy of Naruto's earlier attack. You're going to pay for that brat. Kisame yelled as charged towards the young Uzumaki at lightning speed, Samahadi rays. Naruto just managed to block the sword strike with rage and Jinryu, quickly changing it back to wind as he sent Kisame flying backwards with a hard grunt. Naruto swung his sword again, this time releasing a stream of flames at Itachi. The Uchiha managed to perform a substitution and dodge the flames. He reappeared alongside where Kisame had crashed and picked up his partner. Kisame, we're retreating for now. We came here ill prepared and I sense another large chakra source approaching us quickly. Itachi said as he and Kisame vanished without a trace. With the main threat gone, Naruto deactivated Reijin Jinryu, the sword returning to its sealed form. The young Rinnegan user let out a sigh of relief as he felt the chakra pressure from the sword vanish. Damn I really need to practice with this thing more. Naruto muttered to himself. You actually did pretty good for your first try Gaki, Kurama said. You managed to switch elements rather quickly though that just made you more exhausted however, still not bad. Naruto was about to respond when a crash nearby caught his attention. The dust settled revealing a human-sized toad with Jiraiya standing on top of it in one of his poses. All evil beware. The gallant toad sage Jiraiya has arrived. Jiraiya declared loudly. All he got was a blank and unimpressed stare from Naruto and Kurama followed by a cricket chirping somewhere. Naruto said nothing but shook his head and walked off, leaving an embarrassed Jiraiya still stuck in his pose. When you're done goofing around Jiraiya we should probably get moving or else we'll lose sight of this person we're searching for. Naruto said before dashing off. Why yeah. Jiraiya said as he hopped off the toad, which promptly poof away. Looking around the destruction Jiraiya could only wonder what had transpired here. Three days later, Tanzaku Gai, 
after three uneventful days of traveling the duo finally arrived at Tanzaku Gai, a famous place for its Tanzaku castle and other attractions. According to Jiraiya's source Tsunade had been seen here to take a break after her latest gambling loss. Naruto was still having a hard time to believe that this supposed famous woman was an addicted gambler and what more was a distant relative, from both her Senju side and Uzumaki side. Kurama had explained that the Rikudu Senen, real named Hagoromo Otsutsuki, had a brother called Hamura Otsutsuki. Like his brother, Hamura also possessed the Rinnegan, but unlike Hagoromo who could read a person's chakra signature like the Sharingan, Hamura's Rinnegan could see a person's chakra points like the Byakugan. Also Hamura had two sons, with the eldest founding the Uzumaki clan and the youngest founding the Hyuga clan. Kurama theorized that Naruto's Rinnegan was actually a combination to both Hagoromo and Hamura, the only other person ever having that was their mother, Kagaya Otsutsuki. Kurama wasn't entirely sure why but for now they agreed to focus on that later when they had more time. What the hell happened here? Naruto said out loud when he saw what remained of Tanzaku Castle. After asking some bystanders, the pair learned that a giant snake had destroyed the castle, which meant that Orochimaru had been here and most likely to find Tsunade. After checking into a hotel, Jiraiya and Naruto kept moving around the town to find the female Sanin. During the walk Naruto took that moment to talk to Kurama about a certain topic. Hey Kurama, I've been wondering about that guy the first summoned, Mugen Sengoku. Naruto said in his mindscape. Figured you would ask me that. Kurama replied before sighing. Unfortunately I have little info on them. All I know is that they're older than me and the other biju. They? Naruto asked as he made a turn following Jiraiya. Mugen Sengoku is part of an ancient race called the Ashen, Demigod. They're humanoid beings with exceptional power. I don't know all the details but I know that they have a hierarchy where a total of 20 of them rule over the other Ashens. Mugen Sengoku is part of that class and each one of them represents something important to the world, elements, life and death, animals, body and mind, etc. Mugen Sengoku represents humans, or to be more precise human warriors such as samurais and even shinobi. Kurama explained. If you're going to summon them in the future then be ready. I'm not sure if the others will be as cooperative as Mugen Sengoku. I'll tell you more later, looks like the perv spotted someone. Kurama soon closed the link as Naruto followed Jiraiya into a restaurant. Naruto then watched as Jiraiya had a look of a surprise before a grin formed on his face. The young Rinnegan user then looked at the direction Jiraiya was staring at and saw that it was towards the back of the restaurant, where two women, one blonde and one brown haired, and a pig, were seated at. Naruto also noted that the blonde had very large and seemed to react to Jiraiya's presence. That's who we're looking for. Naruto asked himself as he looked at the blonde woman, his eyes were now covered with a genjutsu to hide the Rinnegan again. She doesn't look even close to the pervert's age. Naruto summarized as he stared at both Tsunade and Jiraiya. What the hell do you want Jiraiya? Tsunade asked grumpily as Jiraiya and Naruto took a seat across from Tsunade and her apprentice Shizune, the brown-haired woman. Nice to see you too Haim, Jiraiya said cheerfully while Tsunade scoffed. I've been meeting a lot of old faces today. Tsunade grumbled but Jiraiya heard it. So Orochimaru came to you, Jiraiya said as he stared at his buxom former teammate carefully. I guess he told you about his little visit to Konoha then? Yeah he told me about the invasion. Tsunade replied before taking a chug of sake. So sensei's dead huh? Nope, the old man's still alive and kicking, with a little help from the kid here. Jiraiya stated as he gestured towards Naruto said boy having a bored look. Who's the kid anyway? Tsunade asked as if finally noticing Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki Mai, uh, apprentice. Jiraiya said with some hesitation followed by a scoff from Naruto. Neither went unnoticed by Tsunade and Shizune. Tsunade's eye widened a bit before taking another look at Naruto, taking in the boy's features. Damn he's like a miniature image of Minato but has Kashina's hair color and face. Wonder if he acts like her? Tsunade thought with mirth as she briefly recalled the fiery redhead. Tsunade I'll get straight to the point. Jiraiya said, trying to change the conversation. After the invasion sensei realized that he's getting old. So he's chosen you as the Godem Hokage. Not interested. Tsunade stated flatly without hesitation. Only a fool would take a job as being Hokage. 
She added, not noticing the dark look in Naruto's eyes at that comment. Tsunade you know that's not true. For Kami's sake your grandfather and granduncle were both Hokages. Jiraiya tried to reason but was cut off by said blonde. Yeah and look at what happened to them. They got killed when I was just twelve. That job is a death trap for anyone foolish enough wanting to take it. And fighting for the village just serves to an early grave. Tsunade said harshly as she prepared to take a sip of her sake. Again she didn't notice Naruto's look or his right hand turning into a fist until it smashed her cup into bits. What the hell you brat? Tsunade yelled at Naruto. I've had about enough of your shit. Naruto said with power laced in his voice that for some reason sent a shiver up the two Sanins and one Jonin's spines. I could care less about the village itself and the title of Hokage. But I won't let anyone insult those who've held it and gave their lives for what they believed in. Especially from some old damn treacherous hag. What did you call me you damn gaki? Tsunade seethed at Naruto. While she understood the part about calling her a hag, she didn't understand the treacherous bit. Jiraiya and Shizune were also confused by kept silent. Do you know who I am? I'm one of the three Sanin and the granddaughter and grandniece of the Shodem Hokage and Naidame Hokage respectively. Yeah and I'm the sage of the six paths. Naruto said sarcastically, earning an amused snort from Kurama at how true that statement really was. I could care less of your titles and status. All I see in front of me is a dumb old hag wallowing in her grief. Naruto added calmly but with rage backing it. That was the last straw for Tsunade as she abruptly stood up, her bust jiggling a little at the motion, much to the hidden glee of Jiraiya. That's it, you. Me, outside now so I can knock some manners into you. A grin formed on Naruto's face, one filled with sadistic pleasure etched on it that made Tsunade a little bit nervous. But she pushed it outside as she and Naruto walked outside the restaurant. Jiraiya sama, we should sew something? Tsunade sama will most likely kill him in her current state of mind. Shizune pleaded to the toad sage. To her surprise, Jiraiya shook his head, actually, it's the opposite. We should make sure that Naruto doesn't accidentally kill Tsunade. The toad sage commented. Five minutes later, the group of four plus one pig were now outside the bar in the middle of the streets. Nighttime had already come, and only the street lights and lights from the nearby houses allowed them to see anything. Tsunade had an arrogant smirk on her face while Naruto's remained impassive. Oi Tsunade. You should really reconsider this. The Gaki is not someone to underestimate. Jiraiya warned from the sidelines besides Shizune. Sinade made a TCH noise at her former teammate's comment before turning her view back towards. One finger, she said as she raised her right pointer finger. All I need is one finger to beat you. If you win I'll become the Godem Hokage. But if I win, you give me all your money. Fine, Naruto's voice said. Tsunade's eyes widened as she realized that Naruto was now directly in front of her, a glare now forming on his originally calm face. Then let's get this over with, he added before burying his left fist into Tsunade's stomach. The punch was strong, and Tsunade lurched forward, gasping at the pain. A punch of that level would have sent a person flying, but Tsunade saw that Naruto's right hand was gripping her left arm. At that moment Suande could feel her chakra being drained by the redhead. Not yet. Naruto whispered into her ear. Now that she was bent over, Naruto could reach her face now. It's too soon for your punishment to end. He finished. With that Naruto continued delivering blow after blow onto Tsunade's form, not pausing for a moment or letting go of her arm. Shizune along with Tantan were looking on in shock at what they were seeing. A 13-year-old was beating her mentor Tsunade Senju one of the three Sanins of Konoha, easily. Jiraiya was also surprised but less so as he expected this. If Naruto could toss him around so easily during the trip, then it wouldn't come as much of a shock if Naruto could lay a smack down on Tsunade. Still to see Naruto using only brute force on Tsunade of all people was unexpected. After several punches Tsunade finally managed to free herself by gripping Naruto's wrist and throwing the redhead away from her. Naruto merely landed safely on the ground thanks to his gravity manipulation. Naruto appeared calm and had zero bruises on him. Tsunade however was painting heavily from the repeated punches to her stomach, along with several bruises on said spot and her face too. She was glaring hard at Naruto and if looks could kill, the Jinchuriki would be dead by now. Ready to give up granny? It would save you some dignity to do it now then later. After all, 
How humiliating it would be if one of the legendary Sanins was defeated by a mere genin. Naruto said mockingly. Don't get why you damn brat. Tsunade yelled back as she rammed her right pointer finger into the ground. The impact cased the earth to shake and a crack began to form, heading straight towards Naruto. But Naruto merely jumped into the air and was now floating, causing the others to stare at him wide eyes. Something like that is not really going to work on a person with a high wind affinity. Naruto mused before he launched himself forward towards Tsunade. Dumb kid. Tsunade muttered with a grin. The first time she had been unprepared for Naruto's speed. But now she could see him as bright as day, and trying to take on Tsunade head on was suicide. With that in mind Tsunade prepared to stop Naruto in his tracks with her finger. But to her surprise Naruto went right through her instead, shocking her and the onlookers. T that wasn't Genjutsu. That was a space-time ninjutsu like Minato's Hiroshin but without a kanai or seal formulas. Jiraiya thought in awe and shock. Could this be the power of the Rinnegan? As Naruto's feet touched the ground, he spun around and faced Tsunade's back. Shinrai Tenshi. He whispered and an invisible force struck the Sanin from behind. It sent Tsunade flying forward but thanks to her ninja skills she managed to recover quickly. Is this all you have granny? I would have thought that the granddaughter of Mito Uzumaki would be better than this. Naruto commented in a disappointed tone. Tsunade's eyes widened, as did Shizune and Jiraiya's. How do you know my grandmother's name? Tsunade demanded. TCH, I'm an Uzumaki. I went out of my way to learn everything about my clan, including how Mito Obasama was married to the Shodem Hokage and the Kayubi's first Jinchuriki. Plus I managed to look into the fox's memories too. Naruto replied casually. And after looking through them, I can tell for a fact that a person like you, who just drowns her grief in alcohol and gambling, doesn't deserve to have any blood relations to someone as great as Mito Obasama. Jiraiya's mind was moving over time at this information. Naruto looked into his clan? When? And he could see through the Kayubi's memories? How could he do that? Did Naruto tamper with the seal? Does this mean that Naruto is friends with the Biju or at least neutral with the fox? All these thoughts were running through Jiraiya's head but were promptly cut off by a roar from an enraged Tsunade. Don't you dare lecture me Gaki, you have no idea what I've been through. What I've lost, and don't speak of my Obasama as if you know her, Tsunade yelled as she picked up a large chunk of earth and threw it at the redhead. Naruto however just repelled the projectile with a wordless Shinrai Tensai, he then disappeared again before appearing in front of Tsunade and delivered a swift kick to the ribs sending the slug princess flying again. Tsunade crashed into a brick wall, creating a hole in it. I know all about hardship Suande. I lost my parents on the night I was born, given a burden I never asked for, and suffered at the hands of foolish shinobi and villagers who couldn't see past their hate. Naruto said calmly as he dodged a punch from a now recovered Tsunade. Jumping back, Naruto shot out chakra chains from his back that wrapped themselves around Tsunade's figure. This surprised Tsunade, Jiraiya and Shizun. T those are Kashina's chakra chains. Did Naruto inherit her special chakra too? Jiraiya thought but just continued to listen to Naruto as said person held Tsunade in place with his chains. I know that you lost your younger brother, Nawaki, and your lover, Dan. Naruto commented, once again shocking Tsunade. However you weren't the only one suffering. Mito Obasama lost her husband her son and don't forget about Nawaki, who was her grandson, and then she lost her entire clan, her freaking homeland, how do you suppose she felt? Naruto yelled. Tsunade said nothing, but you could tell that her muscles relaxed through the chakra chains holding her, she just continued to listen as Naruto's rant went on, guilt slowly building into her. In fact Shizune and Jiraiya were also listening, the former worried about her master's condition of hearing all this while the latter just listened intently. And do you know what was worse? Naruto asked to a still quiet Tsunade. The fact that Mito Obasama could only watch you, her granddaughter, the only living relative she had, suffer so much and there wasn't a thing she could do about it. Do you even have any idea how much pain your self grieving and drowning in your pathetic vices caused your grandmother? Did you even care about the fact that you still had one living relative? Naruto asked. By this time Tsunade was shaking as tears began to form in her eyes. She had been so consumed by her own grief of losing her brother and lover that she never took in the fact of how others people felt, the losses they suffered, especially her own grandmother. 
Naruto paid no heed to this, except for removing the chakra chains from Tsunade's body. It allowed the woman to sink to her knees and hands, her face looking down at the ground. To us Uzumaki, family is one of the most important things to us. Naruto began. So for her to see her own relative in so much pain and unable to do a thing about it, I can't help but feel for Mito Obazma and feel nothing but scorn for a person like you, who acted like a spoiled brat. I don't care if you insulted the title of Hokage or the village, none of that matters to me anymore. But I won't stand for you to insult people who held the position and gave their lives for what they believed in. And I won't forgive you for dishonoring the Uzumaki clan that you're part of, especially when you have your grandmother's famed jutsu on your forehead, you disgrace it. With that Naruto turned away from the down blonde, who was immediately cradled by Shizune. Without even looking Naruto spoke to Jiraiya. I'm heading back to the Hotel Aero Senen. Tomorrow we're leaving and taking Granny with us. Though personally she'd be my last choice for Hokage. And with that Naruto shunshined away, leaving a toad sage. A tearful Tsunade and worried Shizune. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.